Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And uh, I thought it might be useful to start with a little introduction, une petite introduction. And basically, uh, well, in this introduction, it will be quite short, don't worry. So welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And I just wanted to let you know a few things. And the first one is that you should definitely have a look at uh, the version because I am doing quite many videos and uh, it might be so that uh, this version, I mean the version you are watching right now, is not the latest one because I will add uh, regularly new videos, new lessons. So basically have a look at uh, the version just to be sure that you get the, the latest one. Okay. The second thing that uh, we should uh, actually define or see together, because I've been having so many questions regarding this topic, uh, what French do I speak or uh, so what French do I uh, teach and I'm coming from France and I'm coming from this area that we call Le Pays de la Loire, uh, which is somehow considered by the French Academy as without any accent. So basically the French I will teach will be the French from France. Okay, so basically nothing to do with uh, uh, Quebec, Canada or uh, Belgium or basically it will be the, the, the French from France. Okay, uh, the third thing I wanted to actually clarify or see with you, uh, je suis à votre écoute. So basically I am listening to you and uh, normally I try to make the videos according to the, the feedback I receive from, uh, from you. Uh, it is really difficult to please everyone so I try to make videos that will uh, basically please everyone but it's quite difficult. So um, use the feedback, we use the comment uh, options if you want to actually ask for uh, specific topics or uh, if you didn't understand everything and I will try to reply or I will try to make a new video and include this video in the next version okay and the last thing is actually if you want to go further then there is a website and it's www .net. so there you can find quite many uh, other well, things like uh, PDFs and like flashcards and uh, well, you, you can you can go there and have a look. If you want to have some uh, private tutoring, it's always uh, well also possible. We just need to 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 find uh, suitable times uh, and uh, we try to arrange ourselves. But uh, it's it's another option if you go if you want to go further in your studies. Okay, so we can start right now. Avant de commencer, so before we start learning French together, um, I just wanted to actually tell you something and it's the fact that uh, French language and English language, well, they've got a special, special relationship. Um, well, the, the first thing that, of course, you probably know, like many other languages, French uh, tend to take quite many new words from English, so these, these are called les néologismes, okay? So it does mean that you already know quite many words uh, in French. Uh, when we're talking about the new words, of course, you will have to pronounce them a bit differently. And the second thing that you should keep in mind, maybe you don't know that already, but the, until the 14th uh, century, uh, approximately 10 thousand words were introduced into English language and they were coming from French and Norman. So what does it mean? It does mean that uh, you know a lot and really I mean a lot of French words already if you master uh, English. Uh, if it's your mother tongue then it's it, it's quite uh, quite good for you. If it's not your mother tongue then you will encounter while we do these uh, this series of videos, uh, many words that you already know because you've been learning them already in English. Okay, so this is the thing and well, just wanted to start with that. Uh, keep in mind that you already know quite many words in French before you even start learning it. Okay, but now we will start with a serious thing and we will start learning French. Get ready. 
la structure de la phrase. So, the structure of the sentence in French. Okay, so you'll see that in a way it's not that different from uh, English because we are using English here to study and uh, for me to teach. So it means that uh, for us it will be uh, quite nice because in a way French language will actually work or behave uh, in a way similar to English. So first normally will come the subject, le sujet. Then you will put the verb, le verbe, and after that will come what we call les compléments. Okay, so this is the normal structure of a sentence. You start with the subject, then will come the verb, and after that you will complete the sentence with more information, so basically des compléments. Okay, so let's see now an example. Je suis français. Okay, je, I, so it's the subject here, suis, so it's to be, you conjugate it, I am, français, in that case it's an adjective and it's French. Okay, je suis français. So it, it goes in, in that order, you will start with the subject, then you will put the verb, you can see that the verb is conjugated here, so you will have to modify it according to the subject. And then after that, you will put more information, adjectives, or then, uh, well, other things if you want. And then a second example, tu habites en France. Okay, tu, it's you, habite, the verb is habiter, and then you conjugate it here. Habiter is to live en France, in France. France, okay, so you can see that in that case it's what we call complément de lieu, okay, you introduce a place here. Tu habites en France, okay, so, but then we keep the same order because that's normally the way we should do it. So first the subject, then the verb, same thing here, you conjugate it according to tu, and after that, in that case, you will put en France, all right? So this is what we call a normal sentence, une phrase normale, okay? But then, of course, as usual in French, and this is something that you will discover uh, with all these videos that I will make, uh, we've got some exceptions possible, and then the, the modification, you can modify the sentences um, in some cases, okay? But then this is um, the basic, okay? You should keep in mind that first you will put the subject, then the verb is coming, and after that, les compléments. Le sujet, le verbe, les compléments. Je suis français, tu habites en France, and that's it. Les phrases simples, so simple sentences. And we'll see that right now. So, les phrases simples in French language are la phrase interrogative, la phrase affirmative, la phrase négative, la phrase exclamative, la phrase impérative. Ok? So, la phrase interrogative, interrogative sentence, la phrase affirmative, affirmative sentence, la phrase négative, negative sentence, la phrase exclamative, exclamation, la phrase impérative, imperative sentence. And we'll start, of course, with the first one. So for each type of uh, sentence, I will put an example. Okay, so let's start with la phrase interrogative. Aimez-vous le fromage? Okay, so the first thing that you should notice is this point d'interrogation here, and then keep in mind that in French we will put a space before. Okay, the second thing that you can notice is that you've got the verb here, aimer, aimer is to like or to love, and then you will have this vous, so it's the you. 
okay and it's the plural form aimez-vous do you like do you love do you love sorry le fromage so it's cheese of course uh, it's a question that a French person could ask you know do you love cheese do you like cheese and well the, the first thing uh, or the second because the first one was le point d'interrogation the second thing that you could notice is that if we want to respect uh, the rule uh, when we ask a question we should change the order of the sentence so normally in French we've got first the subject then the verb but when we ask a question like that and we want to well respect the rule then we should first put the verb then the subject okay I will make some videos explaining how it works uh, in real situations or if uh, this is the way that uh, people uh, do normally when they ask a question okay but this is the way it should be done okay so this is a question say d'une phrase interrogative aimez-vous le fromage aimez-vous le fromage and remember you need to raise your voice a little bit at the end aimez-vous le fromage Phrase affirmative. Oui, j'aime le fromage. So in that case, you just want to say that you like or you love cheese. And then this is affirmative. You will start with oui here. Oui, j'aime le fromage. Okay, so you can see that in that case, you will use this je. Okay, I will explain in a... The next video why the e is disappearing here but then it's I like I love okay oui j'aime le fromage so you keep the same order subject and then verb okay so the order that actually normally we've got in a French language you will start with the subject and after that the verb is coming la phrase négative Okay, so in that case, you want to say non. Okay, non, je n'aime pas le fromage. No, I don't like cheese. Okay, and in that case, well, we'll see that a bit later as well. You will use this ne and then pas. So basically, when we introduce the negative form in French, we will have two parts. That will be before and after the verb. Okay. Non, je n'aime pas le fromage. La phrase impérative. Mangeons ce fromage. Okay, and in that case, you can see quite clearly that you've got what we call le point d'exclamation here at the end. Uh, keep in mind that you should put a space before it. Okay, so point d'exclamation, and normally it means that you will use that whether to give an order, in most of the cases it will be for an order, or then if you want to give an advice, it's possible as well. Okay, and in that case, mangeons, so it's at the uh, new form. Okay, so we eat. Okay, so let's eat, but then in that case it could be an order, so eat this cheese okay you can see that we will see when we'll uh, discover l'imperative form together that uh, this nous so the subject is not here it's something quite special for the imperative form you take away les pronoms personnels mangeons ce fromage okay and in that case this sentence is une phrase imperative phrase exclamative and in that case, it's actually interesting because it's so short and in a way, it's a sentence even if you don't have any verb. Because here, quel, what, and then bon, good, fromage. So one more time, cheese. What a good cheese, quel bon fromage. Okay, It's a sentence, but then clearly you don't have any verb. Okay, so it means that in some cases, like this one, for instance, you can have sentences without having a verb in them. Okay, and it's here in phrase exclamative, quel bon fromage.
le sujet. And we'll see actually in this video what in French can be subject of a sentence. Okay, le sujet, the subject. And basically it can be un nom, un pronom personnel, un pronom interrogatif, un pronom indéfini. Okay, so when we're talking about, sorry, when we're talking about a subject, it can be un nom, and it's a noun, un pronom personnel, and it's a subject pronoun, un pronom interrogatif, interrogative pronoun, or then un pronom indéfini, indefinite pronoun. And we'll see, and we'll of course start with the, the first one, un nom. Okay, so let's start with un nom. And I just wanted to have a simple sentence in that case. And it will be Vincent enseigne le français. Okay, so Vincent is a first name and it's mine, by the way. Enseigne, here you've got a verb. So the verb is enseigner and it's conjugated in that case. Le français. So it's French and we're referring to French language. Vincent enseigne le français. And in this sentence you can see quite easily that Vincent here is the subject of the verb here. Okay? So we could also change this Vincent, take it away and then put le professeur and it means the teacher. And it will stay also the subject of the sentence. So it's connected directly to the verb enseigner here. Le sujet peut être un pronom personnel. So it can be also a subject pronoun as we saw. So let's see now how it would go. And in that case, same thing, simple sentence to start. Il visite. Paris. Okay, so you get il here, il, visite. This is the verb visiter, you conjugate it. Il visite Paris. So, in that case, you can see also quite easily that this is the subject of the sentence and it's what we call un pronom personnel. So in English it's more clear because it's subject pronoun, so no doubt about the function. And actually we'll discover them together. So the first one is je, I, tu, you, il, he, elle, she. Okay, so je, tu, il, elle. And then for the Plural form, we have nous, we, vous, you. So for the plural form, as in English, we tend to use it, well, of course, for uh, the plural form. And also for the polite form, if you meet someone for the first time, it would be nice to use vous instead of tu. Il, they, so it's the masculine in that case, and then elle. They, but it's the feminine in that case. So in French, we make the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form when we use les pronoms personnels at the plural. Okay, so je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. All right. And so let's see now uh, un pronom interrogatif. So same thing, simple structure, simple sentence, and the sentence is qui parle, so it's a question, okay? So the verb is parler, parler is to talk, okay? And then when you put this qui, and qui is who, basically this qui becomes, of course, the subject in this sentence, and it's a question, who is talking? Qui parle? Qui parle? And the last one will be un pronom indéfini. And it's also quite useful. And I just wanted to make a simple sentence as well to make it clear. Same verb, parler is to talk. And then 
quelqu'un, someone or somebody. Ok? And in that case, quelqu'un parle, somebody is talking, someone is talking. And in that case, you can see quite easily that quelqu'un is the subject of the sentence. Le sujet et le verbe. So, the subject and the verb. And it's actually quite important when we start to learn French just to know that in French, basically, the subject will affect the verb. Okay? So, I just wanted to take a simple example first because we will focus on the conjugation a bit later. So it's not the idea of this lesson. The idea of this lesson is just to show you that basically the relationship between the subject and the verb is quite close because the verb will be affected by the subject. So the verb is marcher. Marcher is to walk. Okay? And let's take the example of il. Okay? So it's he And basically, when you use il, you will have to conjugate the verb. So, conjugate the verb means that for each form, you will have a specific ending. Okay? This is the basic form here, marcher. It's what we call the infinitive. All right? But then, you don't reuse marcher just like that. You will have to conjugate it. So, you will have to modify the ending according to the subject. In that case, il requires that you will put this final e uh, here. So, you will get il marche. All right. So, whoops, sorry. <laughs> the R is coming now. And then, it will be exactly the same thing for the plural form of il. So, they, il marche. And if you look carefully, the ending is different. Okay, we will see everything covering the conjugation a bit later. It's just to show you that the subject is basically affecting quite much the verb. Okay, and so when we're talking about this topic, basically, it's quite good to have a, a general view of the conjugation of marché, so how it will be modified according to the subject. So the first person, je, I, you will get je marche. Tu marche. Il, elle, okay, so tu is for you, the singular form, and then il, he, elle, she, marche. Nous marchons, so it's we, the plural form, vous, You, the plural form, marcher, and then il, oops, sorry, elle, and the plural, marche. So you can see that basically the forms are different, and it's one important thing that you get to keep in mind, uh, and that can be a bit tricky or difficult at the beginning, but then once you get used, you will remember the endings, okay? So basically, the subject will affect the verb, okay? And it was the topic of this video. Les lettres, so the letters, and basically it is quite important because, of course, when you learn a language, Well, you get to know the letters and uh, you want to pronounce it correctly. So, this is exactly what we'll try to do here. I will show you the letters, okay? So, we'll divide them into two groups, the vowels and the consonants, and then I will pronounce them, okay? So, let's first start sorry, with the vowels. And in French, we have six vowels, si voyelles, okay? Si voyelles, and the first one is A, E, I, O, U, Y. Okay, this one is quite tricky for some of you maybe because maybe in your languages uh, this Y is not a vowel but a consonant. Uh, in French it is a vowel. Okay, A, E, 
I, O, U, Y. Okay, and then let's see the consonants, and we've got the consonant, so 20 consonants, and the first one is B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Z. Okay, so it's B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Z. Okay, so it was just to present you these uh, letters, so the six vowels and a 20 consonant that we do have in French. Uh, don't worry, in the coming videos we will focus on the pronunciation and we'll see how to go combine them and uh, how to pronounce them when we combine them. Okay, but then keep them in mind and try to practice on your own. Okay? Les modes et les temps. So basically, when you translate it that directly, we're talking about moods and tenses. So basically, like in English, uh, if you want to use a verb, and normally when you will use a verb, you will have to basically decide whether you are using a certain mood and also whether you are using a certain tense for this verb just because the moods and the tenses will be used in specific context or situations okay so let's see now les modes okay and basically in french we've got the first one that you will use and the first one that we will see together in the coming lessons will be l'indicatif okay and l'indicatif is used to express the reality so what is really happening then we'll have le conditionnel okay so basically like in english we will use it to express what we call l'éventualité something that might happen okay and then we'll have this imperative form as well so imperative mood sorry just to express l'ordre the order or then le conseil advice and then we'll have this subjonctif which can be quite tricky especially at the beginning because it doesn't exist really in english and it's to express what we call le sentiment okay so basically we'll have these main moods so l'indicatif le conditionnel, l'impératif, and then le subjonctif. It does mean that in all these moods, dans toutes ces modes, you will have different tenses as well. Okay, and that's what we are going to see next. Because basically, when we're talking about les temps, the tenses, well, I will make it simple, okay, and we'll see in the coming or in the next videos uh, how it will work but mainly you will express three things with these tenses and the first one is le présent okay the present then le futur the future and then le passé the past and we will see that for all these three options we will have different ways of expressing 
them so it does mean that we will have not only three tenses but much more okay no stress about that don't worry we'll do it little by little so but just to to keep in mind that when we're talking about the tenses well we express normally le présent le futur and then le passé okay so keep in mind that we get les modes okay so le mode and you get to decide what mode or what mood sorry you will have to use indicatif conditionnel imperatif or then subjonctif and the second thing that you have to, to choose is the correct tense le temps and then it's présent futur and passé and keep in mind that as I said we've got quite many tenses but we'll see that a bit later Les signes diacritiques. And I know that the title is quite scary. And you probably think that, oh, I don't want to watch this video. But trust me, it's, uh, I mean, it's quite important uh, for a good reason. And well, basically, what is les signes uh, diacritiques? It's the idea that at one point in the language, we will use un signe, a sign, something that you will add to a letter and by adding this sign to the letter it will make a new letter okay and it's something quite common in French and we'll see exactly what we are talking about because even if it's scary the good news is that we've got only cinq signes diacritiques cinq signes diacritiques and the first one is accent aigu okay the second one is accent grave third one is accent circonflex then tréma and last but not least cédille okay so accent aigu accent grave accent circonflex tréma and then cédille so let's start with l'accent aigu and it basically it looks like that okay so this is l'accent aigu and let's see you will actually put l'accent aigu on the top of e okay it doesn't come on the top of a i o u y it's only on e okay so keep in mind that l'accent aigu is only coming right here on the top of e okay then you will have l'accent grave and it goes in the other direction okay but then l'accent grave is actually more used because you can put it on the top of a on the top of e and then on the top of u all right after that you get l'accent circonflex so it's like a little roof here like a little hat and it's it will come on the top of a e i o and u then tréma just like two little dots dots here and it will come on the top of a e i o and then u okay and the last one la cédille if you look carefully basically it will come right below your C letter okay so remember l'accent aigu l'accent grave l'accent circonflexe le tréma la cédille all right and the idea of course in this video it's only is only to present these five signs so in the next lessons in the next units I will focus on explaining how to pronounce them because of course the pronunciation will change if you put l'accent aigu on the top of a uh, basically you won't pronounce it like you would pronounce it without the accent okay but then keep in mind that we've got these five signes diacritiques 
accent aigu, accent grave, accent circonflexe, tréma, cédille. Les ligatures. So even if it's a bit scary, let's start the video. And basically, what are we talking about when we're talking about les ligatures? Well, we're talking about two letters, uh, some strange letters, you might say. This is the first one, and this is the second one. They are quite rare in the French language, but basically you can see them and you need to know what they are and that's the reason why I've been making this little video. So the first one is this E dans la. Okay, so basically if you translate it directly, it's E inside or in a. And that's the reason why, because if you look carefully, it's only one letter here. And like if these two letters were glued Okay, or connected like that. So it's E dans la. Let's see a few examples of words that use this E dans la. And the first one is curriculum vitae. The second one is ex aequo. Then etc. And then ad vitam Eternam. And so if you look carefully at these words, you realize that this letter is coming directly from Latin. Okay, so uh, and it's quite rare to see this letter in French language. Well, you've got here some examples, but uh, I've been choosing the, the, the more common examples because the other one probably you won't, you will never use them or maybe never encounter them. But anyway, uh, it is rare, but it does exist and uh, it can be a challenge in some cases for some of you to write this letter correctly if you want to write it with your computer because you've got to go through insert and then after that symbol so basically it's up to you if you want to write it correctly you should put of course this e dans la uh, if you don't manage to put it then just put a and after e uh, maybe your computer will correct it automatically you never know okay the second one is this one and it's E dans l'eau. So basically the same concept. So E inside O. All right. So because it's only one letter here and you get this O and E connected like glued okay, to each other. So let's see because this one is uh, actually uh, used a bit more often and I've been selecting few words and the first one is un boeuf, un coeur, Un coeur, it's actually quite interesting because even if you write them differently, you pronounce them the, the same way. Un oeil, un oeuf, une soeur. Okay, so un boeuf, un coeur, un coeur, un oeil, un oeuf, une soeur. All right, so these words are actually not that rare and we'll see exactly what they mean. The first one, un boeuf, okay, steer, ox, or then un coeur, heart, un oeuf, egg, un coeur, is it coir, choir? I'm not really sure about the pronunciation in English, sorry about that, I don't want to make any mistake. Then we've got Un oeil, I, and then une soeur, sister. Okay, and this letter is actually uh, more often used, okay, than the, the previous one. Uh, and then it's, well, basically it will be exactly the same challenge if you want to uh, write it correctly with your computer, uh, whether you try to find uh, this letter by inserting uh, a symbol, okay, or then you just put O and then after that you will put a, uh, okay. Technically it's a mistake, but then basically if you cannot make uh, uh, in another way, then just write it O and E, uh, okay. Okay. 
le masculin et le féminin. So the masculine and the feminine. And actually, uh, in French, uh, when it comes to grammar, we've got uh, the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, and we'll see that it will affect uh, quite deeply the, the, the language. For instance, uh, we've got, when it comes to les, les pronoms personnels, we will have the difference between the masculine and the feminine. So we'll start with the feminine, ladies first, and it's elle, okay? So she, so in that case, it is the feminine singular form, elle, okay? For the masculine, it will be il. So in English, it will be he, okay? Il, so in that case, it's the masculine singular form form. When it comes to the plural, actually in French we also have the difference between the feminine and the masculine. So basically here, elle, it's the feminine plural form. Okay, and then in the same way here, il will be the masculine plural form. So if you look carefully, the only difference between the singular and the plural, it's this final s here. Same thing here between il and il, it's the final s. And if you listen carefully, basically you don't have any differences. So it's l and l, il and il. Okay, the grammar rule is quite strict in French. If you've got a group of persons and um, in this group you get at least one man, it will be masculine. Okay, so let's see now if you discover a new word. Okay, so it could be a noun, it could be an adjective. Um, in that case, the, the good uh, reflex would be to try to see and to try to remember whether it's uh, feminine or whether it's masculine. Okay, because it will basically uh, affect after that and we'll see that in this video what will come after and in most of the cases we're talking about uh, the adjectives. Okay, so it's always good to remember the gender of a word. Okay, uh, of course in that case if you're encountering a new noun so basically you try to remember the gender at the same time. I will make some videos uh, covering the topic and that um, while well, giving you giving you a few tips to try to see you know whether it's masculine or feminine according to the ending of the word in some cases it can help, but in most of the cases, you will have to remember the gender. Uh, just when you when you discover a new word, try to remember the gender at the same time. Okay, so for a good reason, and this is now what I will explain it. Uh, I will explain. Sorry. Well, basically, when you've got a noun, it will actually be connected to an adjective and whether it's masculine or feminine basically in French the adjective will be changed also. So let's see an example here. We've got un pays chaud. So if we translate directly it's un pays, it's a country, a country and it's chaud is warm, hot. Okay, un pays Show. So you can see that here, P is masculine, un is the article, the masculine article, un pays show. And in that case, your adjective is like that, written at the basic form. So the masculine form is the basic form. And if we take another word, like boisson, boisson is feminine, une boisson, Okay, so here you've got the article and it's the feminine form of the article. Une boisson. And you can see that here your adjective is changing. You will have to put this final E, chaud, okay, at the end. And then the pronunciation will change a little bit. Chaud. So here you pronounce the final D, whereas in the masculine form you don't pronounce it. Okay, all right, so it's just an introduction, don't worry. In the coming videos, I will explain everything. So the articles, the adjective, the way to put the feminine form, everything. So in this video, it's just to show you that 
basically the masculine and the feminine so whether it's a noun at the masculine and at the feminine it will affect uh, the adjective connected to it okay and then it's also uh, actually possible that the noun or as we saw le pronom personnel will affect the verb we are talking in that case about uh, what we call compound tenses so we will cover that um, probably in unit four five or six uh, have a look there we're talking about le passé composé for instance so the past tense and basically let's have a look there you will have il est allé okay it's the masculine form here so allé is to go and this is the compound tense of il est allé all right and then you will have here elle est allé so basically he went she went all right and here you can see that you will have the difference between the masculine and the feminine but don't worry about that because i will explain that later it's just to show you that basically the difference between the masculine and the feminine will concern of course the subject so pronom personnel and then the nouns but it will also affect what is coming after so it can be an adjective as we saw or it can be a verb in that case it's a compound tense so it's this past uh, tense le passé composé all right so no stress about that i will explain everything after okay just keep in mind that we've got a difference between the masculine and the feminine and so my tip for this video will be when you discover a new word as i said try to remember whether it's masculine or oh, sorry feminine here or masculine okay merci beaucoup oui et non oui et non so basically yes and no oui et non so because i thought you know it might be useful to make this video uh, in some situations i've been assuming that people would understand and would know how to use oui et non but it's not always the case and um well basically i don't expect them to do that and as i am doing this video and this series of videos for beginners and total beginners then this is the reason why i thought it might be useful to introduce oui yes and then non no so basically when you have a question here uh, well in french you can answer with oui yes or then with non no it might seem simple but it's just the way it is and let's make it quite clear and that's the reason why we have this question vous parlez français okay basically do you speak french i just put that in that order because normally it should be verb first and after the subject if we want to construct a correct uh, question but in many situations especially when we talk we can keep the same order we just need to raise the voice at the end so of course l'académie française would like me to put them in the other order but basically you will hear many french people and many french speaking people just keep the same order and raise their voice at the end okay vous parlez français so basically it's a question do you speak french and in that case you've got well two possible answers and if you want to actually enter answer sorry uh, in a short way the first option would be oui or then non of course at one point and that's the reason why we'll have these videos uh, you will have uh, the possibility to construct sentences but basically if you want to answer shortly it's not rude it's quite um just you you just show that you don't really want to, to to talk that much but basically you just answer to the question so oui yes and then no no let's see now how it will work if we have a question but if this question is at the negative form okay because in that case it's somehow a bit tricky because strangely for the affirmative answer it won't be we oui, but it will become c si. 
and then for the negative it will be exactly the same it will be no okay so keep in mind if you get a question but then this question is at the negative form then instead of using we oui, you will use si but then no will be the same okay so let's see the same question vous ne parlez pas français so you don't speak french okay so this is how it works for the negative form don't worry in few videos i will explain you how it works exactly okay but at this point it's only to introduce oui non si non okay so it's a negative question in that case you don't speak french and the answer would be si or then non obviously at one point you would like to uh, make sentences instead of using these two uh, possibilities okay but it's just to show you that you know <laughs> actually you've got these two options so if you've got a question the first one would be oui or then no if it's a negative question then it will be si or no okay la punctuation so let's discover together the punctuation in french okay so we can start and i thought it might be useful to start with this one and it's le point okay so le point and for this video i will actually tell you how to put uh, these uh, punctuation signs and if we need to put some spaces or not because it does change a little bit if you compare it to english for instance so let's see now le point so let's imagine that you will have your sentence or it could be a word like that and after that you will put le point then you will have to put a space and the next word will come okay so it could be a sentence before a sentence after but the main thing is to remember that you don't have any space before but you will have one after okay so let's see now the next one and it's le point virgule okay le point virgule and le point virgule works like that mot numéro one then you will put you would put sorry le point virgule without any space then a space and the next word or the rest of the sentence okay la virgule okay so la virgule and for la virgule actually you will have the first word then la virgule is coming without any space then you will put a space and the rest of the sentence or the next word is coming after okay nothing before one space after le point d'interrogation le point d'interrogation okay and in that case keep in mind that you will have whether your sentence or this word then and this is quite important because it does change from other languages you put a space you put le point d'interrogation okay then after that a space and the rest will follow okay so this is quite important remember that we will put in french a space before le point d'interrogation because it's not the case in uh, well some other languages okay and now le point d'exclamation okay so le point d'exclamation you will have your sentence and then the previous word then un espace space then you will put your point d'exclamation here after that a space and the next word is coming same thing as we had for le point d'interrogation remember that you will have to put a space before les deux points okay les deux points and then they work like that le mot then you will have to put space les deux points 
are coming right after another space after then the rest will come okay so remember one space before one space after les guillemets okay les guillemets and concerning les guillemets actually it will go like that so you will have your sentence or well the previous word then a space then the first one after that a space then you put what you want to put between them <laughs> another space guillemets again space and the rest of the sentence or the next word or whatever you want here but you've got to keep in mind that here it's quite tricky space then guime space what you put between space guime space and what comes after les points de suspension les points de suspension and regarding les points de suspension it will become it will come sorry like that so what comes before le mot or then the sentence and then les points de suspension space and then the next word or what comes after the sentence if you want okay so nothing before a space after les parenthèses les parenthèses okay and regarding les parenthèses well the first word then you will put a space then the first part so la première parenthèse your word or then a group of words fermer la parenthèse then you will put a space and after that the next part is coming okay so remember before and after nothing between okay écrire en français so write in french and uh, well i thought it might be useful to just make this little video because I've been teaching for quite many years now and I've been noticing that at one point um, my students tend to be a bit disappointed or sad because they just realized one important thing in French and it's the difference between what je prononce I pronounce and j'écris I write because basically you can see that of course you will have some connections between what you pronounce and what you write but we've got many many things that we will have to write and we won't pronounce I thought it might be useful to start uh, and give you an example here with the verb parler okay so we will make the conjugation remember that we will focus on the conjugation in another video that will come a bit later okay but it's just to give you a good example here so parler is to speak or to talk and it's a regular verb so it belongs to the first group ending with a air so let's see how we conjugate it at the present tense je parle tu parles, il, elle parle, nous parlons, vous parlez, il, elle parle. Okay, so basically you get here this je and it's I, je parle, I talk, I speak, tu, and tu is for you, okay, and it's the singular form, tu parles, here, you talk, you speak, il, it's for the masculine form, he, il, and then elle, feminine form, she, elle. Okay, so il, elle, and then we've got the same form, parle. Then comes the plural form, nous, so we, okay, and in that case it's nous parlons, 
v u so it's the plural form and then we will see a bit later that it, it can be also for the singular if it's the polite form okay vous parlez and then we've got il so they but then in french we divide and we make the difference between the masculine plural so il here and elle the feminine plural il elle parle all right so we get je parle tu parles il parle elle parle nous parlons vous parlez il parle elle parle and if you look carefully you write it with e here e s e then you get a n t here so i only take these four forms just for a good reason it's just because if you look carefully and if you listen to me i will pronounce it je parle tu parles il parle elle parle il parle elle parle so it does mean that even if you write them differently e e s and then e n t you will pronounce them the same way and this is basically the difficult thing about french uh, language it's just a the big difference between what you say what you pronounce and what you write okay so in this example for this verb actually if we finish it like that you can see that you've got three phonetical forms the first one is parle okay the yellow one then you've got nous parlons and then you've got vous parlez but of course at one point if you want to write it correctly you will have to remember the endings and you will have to put this s here for instance if you want to write it correctly or then a n t here even if you pronounce them the same way okay so my advice would be <laughs> if you want to be happy <laughs> uh, well basically when you see it's coming yeah when you see a new word a nouveau mot uh, well word in general so it can be a verb it can be an adjective it can be a noun whatever when you see a new word uh, try to remember of course how you will pronounce it but then try try also to remember how to write it correctly and in this first lesson i thought it would be or it might be useful to start with the pronunciation of the vowels okay and after that of course consonant will come but it will be in uh, in the next lesson okay so let's see now for the the vowels how it goes so the first one is a okay a so not really difficult to pronounce for most of you second one is a uh, repeat a uh, okay remember that on this vowel we can put some accents okay and then it will affect the the way you will pronounce the uh okay but if it's like that without any accent and you you need to spell it or to uh to pronounce the letter it's uh okay uh next one is e e then o okay so don't be afraid to put your mouth really round o o okay so it's quite deep o okay then u u so this u can be tricky so uh, from my experience of teaching i've been noticing that uh, well in most of the cases uh, for american people it can be quite tricky at the beginning so you really need to insist on that it's u okay spanish speaking persons can have some difficulties as well for that okay so don't be afraid to pronounce so really it's not because in most of the cases that's the, the mistake people tend to make they pronounce it like okay now in that case it's really so really narrow sound okay so don't be afraid to insist on that and the last one is uh well it's y so if you need to spell it then you say y 
okay when you pronounce it it's like e e okay but the name of the letter is y okay so if we check them again one more time this one is a then comes a e o u remember u and the last one y for the name okay but then the pronunciation is e all right and in this uh, lesson we'll discover the pronunciation of the consonant so le consonne are you ready so let's start now okay so les consonnes b b okay so this one shouldn't be that difficult to produce b b then comes c okay c d d f f G, G. Okay, so if we want to repeat them one more time, B, C, D, F, G. Okay, let's see the others. H, H, J, J. K, K, L, L, M, M. Okay, one more time. H, J, K, L, M. Okay, and then of course it continues n n p p q q r r so it's quite important because people tend to think that french people are making this eh, like that really deep and really uh, well it, it will hurt your uh, throat if we, you try to insist too much on that and if you listen to me well basically it's not that strong air air okay so it's quite soft air air the next one is s s okay so let's see them one more time n P, Q, R, S. And the last consonant are T, T, V, V, W, W. Okay, so we've got this double, 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 and then V, double V, okay. X, X, and the last one, Z, Z, okay, so remember to pronounce this D at the end, Z, Z, okay. So let's see them one more time, T, V, W, X, Z. Discover les accents, so the accents. And normally when we talk about the accents, we tend to insist on the accents which are on the top of the letter E, okay? Because they will change the, the pronunciation of the, the letter. When you put the accents on the top of O, E, or A, well, nowadays we don't really pronounce the the the, 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 the differences, uh, but then a uh, is still affected by that. So you should really, really first remember the name of the accent, okay? And it's normally like that, okay? And then the sound that you will have to pronounce uh, or to produce when you see it 
on the top of the uh, okay because so without any accent this letter if you remember we saw that previously is pronounced uh uh okay but then when you put this this one so this one is called accent aigu okay it goes like that in that direction okay and you will pronounce the the, the letter like a okay listen to the difference without the accent uh with the accent a okay without uh and with a all right second accent that we can work on it's a little bit the same but it goes in the other direction so if you look it goes like that okay and then it's called accent grave accent grave okay and the sound that you will have to produce is a so it's really open I mean the sound is really open and normally your mouth should be opened a little bit more than with the accent aigu as well okay so it goes like a all right don't don't be afraid to insist a little bit on the pronunciation okay uh, first and then you can make it uh, shorter after of course a a all right so let's compare them the first one is a and then the second one is a all right the good news is that the next one so accent circonflex is pronounced like accent grave okay so it's the same pronunciation here okay and it's the open one okay a right, okay a all right so you can see that it's just like a little hat that you get to put on the top of a okay so let's see one more time the differences this one a okay and then these two accents like here a open a okay the last one tréma well basically it's quite rare and the tricky thing is that in some cases you will have to you will have to pronounce it like a okay like for instance noel okay but then in some cases as well it can be pronounced like a okay so my advice would be try to remember the word and they are really really r rare so don't don't be don't be afraid about that okay so but that let's focus on the three main accents here okay the first one accent aigu remember a accent grave a and the last one accent circonflex a so we'll focus on the les caractères spéciaux so the special characters that maybe you will have to use if you want to well spell your name or then if you want to uh, give a web address or something like that so because normally they can be quite useful and at the at the really beginning so it, it's quite useful to to uh, spend a little time on them okay so let's start now uh, les caractères spéciaux the first one okay if you look at it it's here okay and we called it tiré okay tiré all right let's see the second one same thing but it's you know the low one so we call it tiré bas tiré bas okay so remember the first one located in the middle is tiré and the other one here is tiré bas okay let's see the the other one so officially we called it arrobas, arrobas, okay? But then, well, let's be honest, we can hear many French people or French-speaking people using this at, okay? Uh, but then the French were, of course, at, all right? Uh, but officially, it should be arrobas, okay? So don't be surprised if someone is using that or then uh, you can use it as well because that's the way it should be. It should be used, so arrobas, okay? Um, here? So the dot, okay, because it's not always easy to, to spot here. Uh, we, we call it point, okay, point, all right. So one more time, tiré, tiré bas, arrobas, point, okay. And then 
it continues a little bit. So if you want to indicate that you've got well double a double letter, okay, um, you can say so. In that case, it's p p, okay. So you say de, okay. De, it's two in French. De, okay. P, de p, okay. If it would be another letter, then you would say de, and then the name of the the letter, of course. Then this one here is called apostrophe. Okay, apostrophe, apostrophe. Okay, and the last one for this lesson. Here you can see that in some cases, so we'll see that a bit later. I mean the reason why, but still you can have this little thing beneath the C. Okay, and that's what we call cédille, cédille. Okay. Cédille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cédille. Okay? And we'll discover a quite important thing uh, because uh, it's a verb and uh, it's the verb être. Okay? Être means to be. Okay? So, as in many, many languages, the to be is quite useful uh, just for a um, well, simple reason. You tend to use it quite often and then we can use it to construct some composed tenses that we'll see a bit later. Okay, so let's see how it goes at the present form. Le verbe être first is je suis. Je suis. Okay, je, it's the pronoun personnel, so it's I. Okay, suis, I am. Okay, je suis. All right. Then second person, tu es, okay? So remember, être is really tricky, especially when it comes to pronunciations, okay? So first one, suis, as you've been noticing, you don't pronounce the final S, okay? And for tu, then you've got this combination of letters, okay? But then basically the sound you will pronounce or you will produce is a, okay? Tu es, all right? Je suis, tu es. Okay, so let's see the next one. So you get this il, okay, so it's a capital letter, but then it's still it's i and then l, okay, il, so it's he, okay, masculine form, and then l, she, so feminine form, okay, and this is the verb. So il est, or then l. A. So you can notice that even if we write them differently, this a like that and a like that, we, pr we pronounce them the, the same way. And that's usually the difficult thing, you know, with a f French language. Uh, what you write and what you pronounce can be quite different. Okay, so remember, je suis, tu es, il est. A, L, A. Okay, so let's see how the next one comes. Here it's nous, nous. Okay, ah, sorry about that. Oops, <laughs> nous sommes. Okay, nous sommes. Okay, so you don't pronounce the final S here, it doesn't exist. Some, nous some okay then <laughs> the next one is coming vous êtes same thing here notice that final s is not pronounced et et okay and then in french we tend to have this liaison so liaison it's like a link okay that we can make between the words so in that case Vous is ending with S and then you tend to make a little link between them. So, vous êtes. Z, it goes like that. Vous êtes. Okay? Vous êtes. Vous êtes. Alright, so let's see one more time. Je suis. Tu es. Il est. Elle est. Nous sommes. Vous êtes. Okay, and let's see the last one. Il, okay, so you can notice that even if you've got this S at the end, 
and then here you don't have anything well you pronounce them the same way okay il singular form il plural form okay il son final t not pronounced il son elle son okay il son elle son so let's see it again je suis tu es il est elle est nous sommes vous êtes ils sont elles sont all right one more thing to notice because it's quite important this vous form okay can be used for the plural of course and then it's the polite form that we use uh, if you meet someone for the first time uh, let's say it's uh, it's someone that you are uh, connected to uh, professionally or uh, it's well someone important or then well in that case or then you don't know this person uh, you should use definitely this vous okay uh, for the first time it's the polite form after that you can decide whether you want to use this to form okay which is normally quite common in French but then first remember that vous is better okay let's see a few examples now okay first I've been no writing this uh, this question so quelle est votre nationalité okay so here to show you that it's here quelle means what is votre your so it's uh, according to to this vous okay so the polite form of your and then nationalité nationality okay so let's repeat the question quelle est votre nationalité all right and in French we tend to raise the voice at the end when we've got this little point d'interrogation if it's a question don't be afraid to go like Yoop! and raise a little bit at the end okay so quelle est votre nationalité okay quelle est votre nationalité so if you want to present or to say uh, where you're from okay so we're using this être for that you know je suis okay so you get here it's already and then you put this français français okay it's French je suis Français. Je suis français. Okay. Then another example. Quel est votre nom de famille? Famille, family, nom, name. So nom de famille, family name, last name if you want. Okay. Quel, it's still what. Okay, in that case, it's written like that. So we will see that in a coming lesson. But just to inform you, that's the masculine form, just because non is masculine, and here you've got the feminine form because nationalité is feminine. Okay, but then we pronounce them the same way. So quel est what is votre your nom de famille? So family name or last name? Okay, it's a question. Quel est votre nom de famille? Okay, so it's not the opera or uh, something that you want to sing. Okay, so just raise a little bit your voice at the at the end of the the question. Okay, so the answer c'est le François. So it's interesting because you can see that we've got this c here and it doesn't show in the the. The, the, the examples that we saw previously or for the, the, the conjugation just because it's so well basically you can tr you could translate it like it is or this is or yeah it is okay c'est le François okay and the last one quelle est sa profession okay quelle est sa profession what is so être hein, same ça so it's her profession profession okay elle est directrice elle est directrice okay so she's a director and then it's the feminine form here all right
So the last lesson was uh, introduction of uh, le verbe être, okay? And I thought it it would be more logical to uh, continue with uh, le verbe avoir. So avoir means to have, okay? And for the same reason as uh, to be, okay? It's uh, it's really useful and really used. So you should definitely know this uh, verb avoir by heart if you want to master uh, French language, okay? So let's see that the verb avoir, okay? And so we'll see the different uh, forms. So the first one is j'ai. Okay, j'ai. All right. So if you remember correctly, we had this je personal pronoun, and then when it comes near another vowel like a, for instance, then it tends to disappear. Okay. So just to avoid pronouncing this. Je because we think that in French it doesn't sound doesn't sound that beautiful, so we tend to take this e uh away, okay, so that you get this sound j j, okay, so j apostrophe a i. Remember when you combine this a i, you get the e sound, okay. Second one, tu a, okay. As usual in French, final S is not pronounced. Tu a. Tu a. Okay, first one. J'ai. Tu a. Then comes il. So masculine form, he. Okay, il, he. Elle, she. Okay, and then a. So as you can notice, second form a s is pronounced a, and this is a. Same pronunciation in both cases. Okay, then nous avons final s not pronounced avons. Okay, and then we tend to make this little link, as I said previously in the lesson. Uh, uh, for uh, être, you make this link between the two, so nous avons, nous avons, okay, nous avons, nous avons, that's it, next one, same thing, the little liaison, little link between the two, okay, vous avez, vous avez, all right, and the last one, so same thing if you can see, you get this final S and final S here, okay? And then you will have to make the little link between the two. Ils ont, ils ont, ils ont, okay? And then feminine form, elles ont, elles ont, all right? Let's see the whole thing one more time. J'ai. Tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so let's see now, just to make it more clear, remember, so I in French is je, you, it's tu, he, il, she, elle, we, nous, you, so as in English, first use for the plural, a group of person, okay, and then second use the polite form for you, one person, okay, vous, il, elle, one last time, je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. Discover le verbe aller. So the verb aller, aller means to go. So it's really useful because, well, we tend to use it like that. So for the main to go reason uh, quite often. And we we'll use it as also like in many languages uh, for what we call the future proche. So the near future. I am going to... 
and then you put a verb at the infinitive. Uh, so it is it is quite quite used, especially in the oral language. We tend to maybe use it a little bit more than the the real future. Okay, so let's see how you conjugate this aller verbe. The first form is je vais. Okay, so remember final s not pronounced here. Je vais. Okay, when you combine this a e, you get the sound a really open. Okay, je vais. D'accord. Tu vas. Final s doesn't exist. Tu Va, tu va, okay. Then we've got this il. So remember, il. Uh, it's for the, the the masculine form. So he, okay. And then elle, she, okay. And then you get the va form. Basically, you pronounce it like for the tu because you don't pronounce the final s, okay. Il va, elle va, okay. Je vais. Tu vas, il va, elle va. Then, nous, so we, plural form, nous allons, okay, and if you, so final S not pronounced, and then if you are purist, and I'm sure you are, you want to make this beautiful and little liaison, so this little link between the words, so it does mean that you will have to pronounce this z. Uh, sound, okay, listen to me, nous allons, nous allons, okay, nous allons, that's it, same thing here, we'll have this little link between the two, vous allez, vous allez, and the last one, so remember, here you get this S just to make the difference between the singular and the plural because when you put the plural form normally you tend to add S at the end of the words, okay, like here, but then you don't pronounce it, so ils vont, final day, not pronounced, ils vont, and then feminine form, elles vont. All right, let's see everything again. Je vais. Tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. All right? And then, just a few examples, just to show you how uh, useful this uh, aller verb can be because we tend to use this uh, aller verb when you want to ask uh, if someone is uh, doing fine, okay? Uh, so the first question, how do you do in French is comment, so how, comment, allez-vous? And then, same thing here, little link between the two. Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? All right, so I've been putting this vous form here for the first example just to show you that if you meet someone for the first time then it's well it's better to use this vous so here the vous form so because it's the polite form okay comment allez-vous okay it's a question so raise a little bit your voice at the end like comment allez-vous okay you see comment allez-vous all right so answer when you want to say I'm doing fine okay je vais Bien, and then you say merci, thank you. Je vais bien, merci. So now, if you know the person, okay, you get two options. I mean, normally that's the most used one. The first one would be comment vas-tu? Okay, so in that case, you just switch and you change this you, so polite form, and you change it with this tu form, comment vas-tu? Okay. Well, answer can be the same, you know. Je vais bien, merci. Okay. And the other one, comment ça va? Okay. It, it, it would be like impersonal form. Okay. So you're not really addressing uh, directly to the person. Uh, how is it going? Could be translated. Uh, could be translated like that in, in, in English. Okay. Comment ça va? Okay. You raise a little bit at the end. Comment ça va? And then, same thing. You can answer with ça va, merci. Okay, so let's read them. Comment allez-vous? 
Je vais bien, merci. Comment vas-tu Je vais bien, merci. Comment ça va Ça va, merci. We will discover le verbe s'appeler. So, uh, previously we've been seeing uh, three verbs. So, the first one was uh, être, to be. yeah. And then after that it was avoir, to have. And then in the last, uh, last or previous lesson, it was uh, aller, to go. And I thought it would be useful to introduce this s'appeler verb because normally that's the, the, the verb you tend to uh, use uh, at the right beginning when you want to introduce yourself because if you say my name is uh, well in French we will use this s'appeler verb okay it is always tricky and a big challenge for a French teacher uh, to introduce this s'appeler verb at the real beginning because um, It belongs to this group of verbs that we call uh, 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 verb pronomino. So you'll see why. Because if you compare it to the others, something is coming there. Okay. So if you remember, when we conjugate uh, a verb, first we put the pronom personnel, so the personal pronoun here. So je is like uh, I. Okay. And then, so basically, the verb appeler appeler means to call. Okay, so without this S, okay, a place to call, okay, and then when you had this S here, and then if you transform it like in this form, I call, and this is a pronoun, it's like me, so it's like I call myself, I call me, so it's just the way we've got in French to introduce ourselves, okay, so it's je m'appelle, okay, je m'appelle all right second form tu t'appelles okay remember final s not pronounced tu t'appelles okay then il s'appelle il s'appelle elle s'appelle elle s'appelle and then the funny thing for nous or vous you'll see that well basically we repeat it or repeat it's just a pronoun so we call ourselves if you want okay but then we put the pronouns before the, the, the verb okay nous nous appelons and then little link would be Perfect, so let's pronounce the whole thing again. Nous nous appelons. Nous nous appelons. Okay, final S doesn't exist. Nous nous appelons. Okay, then. Vous vous appelez. Vous vous appelez. Okay, so you can hear, we put the little link again here. Vous vous appelez. Alright, and the last one. Il s'appelle elle s'appelle okay so one thing that you should remember and probably you did here okay so here for nous and vous so we've got only one elle like here in the infinitive form so that's the reason why I've been pronouncing appelons okay and then Appeler. All right. But for je, so if you can spot it here, look, we've got double L here, double L, double L, and then for the plural form, double L. So when you get this E vowel, and then you get a double consonant, and well, they are the same, then it does change the pronunciation of E. Uh, you tend to pronounce it like E. Eh. Eh, really open. That's the reason why you pronounce it appel, appel, okay? Appel, 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 and appel. All right? So, as I said, that's the tricky thing with French language. I mean, you write them like here, without S, here, with S, and here, with E, N, T, N, T. You pronounce them the same way. Je m'appelle, tu t'appelles. Il, elle s'appelle. Il, elle s'appelle. Okay? All right. And now a few examples.
Comment vous vous appelez Ok So, comment vous vous appelez So, when you want to know the, the, the name of someone, you know Comment vous vous appelez Answer. Je m'appelle Vincent. Et vous Ok, so, I am Vincent. I call myself Vincent if you want. Vincent. Et vous And you Ok, so you want to know the name of the, the person who is asking this question. Ok. Uh, the other possibility that you would have, you know. So, first you've been starting with comment and then vous vous appelez okay so that's the well a common way of asking the, the the question all right other possibility would be to start with vous vous appelez okay so technically you just take the verb and then you put this comment how at the end okay it would be possible as well okay remember to raise your voice vous vous appelez comment all right and the last one is the more correct form okay so first you should start with comment how and then as in many languages you should well change a little bit the order of the structure of the sentence okay vous appelez vous okay that's the real correct way to ask the name of someone you know comment vous appelez vous All right, and you, then you raise your voice. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right, so let's repeat them. Comment vous vous appelez? Vous vous appelez comment? Comment vous appelez-vous? All right, we'll discover in this lesson pour se présenter. So if you want to present yourself, okay, so it will be a really short lesson, but still quite useful. Because, well, technically, you will have to present yourself at one point when you speak with French people or French-speaking people. Okay, so let's discover how it goes. The first one, well, I tend to use this appeler verb, okay. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. So you use this s'appeler verb so uh, I did introduce this verb in the previous lesson so it was a uh, leçon H okay so if you didn't see this lesson I uh, definitely invite you uh, to, 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 to watch it because uh, I tend to explain the reason why you know I've got this well there is this je m'appelle form okay so je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois so that's the first possibility you will have uh, the other possibility is to use this être, so to be, verb, je suis, I am, je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so the first one, je m'appelle, so basically, s'appeler, or je m'appelle, you could translate it directly, but, well, it's not really interesting, but still, you know, I call myself, okay, so that's the verb we tend to use when we introduce ourselves, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois, ok, and then the second one, I am, je suis Vincent Lefrançois, and the last option we will have is mon nom, my name, mon nom est, is Vincent Lefrançois, ok, first option, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois, second, je suis Vincent Lefrançois, last one, mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Of course, the first one is the most used, okay? Even if the verb is a bit tricky at the beginning, definitely you should work on it and uh, you should, well, master this uh, sapli verb because that's the one we will use when we introduce ourselves, okay? We'll discover les articles définis, so definite articles. Uh, in English, it would be the, okay? But in French, of course, as usual, we've got the difference between the masculine form the feminine form and the plural form, okay? And we start with the masculine form, so we've got le, le, okay? And then, in some cases, this vowel, e, uh, if it's close to other vowels, so if there is a word after that starting with a vowel, in some cases, it, it will have to disappear, okay? So, you will get this L apostrophe, so that's the reason I've been writing it here, okay? But then, the main form is le, okay? Then, la, feminine form, la, same for the same reason, you know, you will have this option, 
L apostrophe as well. And then the plural form is LE. Okay, so where are the in, whereas in English you get only, there is only this THE form in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form LE, the feminine form LA, and then the plural form LE. So, of course, according to the word, you will have to choose the correct article. So, we'll take a few examples here. The first one is chien. Chien is a dog. And in French, chien, like that. It's masculine, so le chien. So, basically, you just put the article le and then chien. Okay? In that case, second case, ordinateur. Well, you can see that it starts with the vowel O. Okay? And as I said, you know, E uh, and O, they don't get along that well. So, you get to take this E away, and then you get this l'ordinateur, l'ordinateur, all right? And third example, so I took on purpose this hotel, okay, because it starts with H, but remember that in French we don't pronounce H, okay? So basically the first sound of the word is the vowel O, okay? So for the same reason, E needs to disappear. L'hôtel. Okay, so we re if we repeat them, le chien, l'ordinateur, and then l'hôtel. Okay, feminine form, la famille. Okay, so no problem. So family, la famille. Okay, then we've got argent, money, argent. Same for the same reason. So uh, uh, l'argent. Okay, you get to take this out of the way. L'argent. And same thing as previously when what we saw for the, the masculine part. Even if you've got this H, then the first sound you hear is A. Ah, okay, so for the same reason you will have to take this A ah away. And then you get this L'habitation. L'habitation. Okay, and then I've been taking, well, basically the example from here. Chien, okay. And then I put S at the end. And it's the mark of the plural, okay? So you put les chiens, the dogs, okay? Les chiens. And then you take famille, family, okay? You just add this final S and you get the plural form. Les familles, okay? Remember, chien, singular form, chien, same pronunciation, but you put this S, okay? Final S, not pronounced. Famille, singular form, famille, plural form, same pronunciation, S, not pronounced. Okay? We'll discover les articles indéfinis. So, indefinite articles. So, any, um, in English, uh, there is only one and it's a uh, or un. Okay? And in French, we've got always the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form, as we saw in the previous lesson, remember, for the uh, definite articles, okay, it was the same, okay, and in this lesson, so article indéfini, well, it's the same, we'll start with the masculine form, and the masculine form goes like that, so when you put these two letters together, it can be quite tricky to pronounce at the beginning, of course, after that, you will master it without any problem and without any doubt but you get to pronounce it like un. so it's uh, what we call the nasal so it goes in your nose okay un. so if you listen to me you don't hear any n okay so it's just a combination of the two un. 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 all right okay so that's the masculine form then the feminine article is here and it's easier because if you you have this u n e then you pronounce it un un okay masculine un feminine form un un okay and then the plural form de all right here a s you pronounce it you pronounce it like e okay un un de all right let's see few examples now okay here ami means friend okay un ami and then we tend to make this little little link between the two un ami un ami okay soleil sun un soleil un soleil 
Livre, book. Un livre. Un livre. Voiture, car. Feminine. Une voiture. Une voiture. École, school. Feminine form as well. Une école. Une école. Décision. Une décision. Une décision. Don't ask me to translate this decision. Come on, please. Ami, so I've been taking this now. Look, Ami here. So we've got the masculine form and it's the singular. Remember, if you want to put the plural form, then you just add this final S here. Okay, but then technically you pronounce it the same way. So singular form Ami, plural form, you add this S, but it's Ami as well. Okay, in that case, you get de, so here de, okay, here, and then there is this little liaison, remember, it's been introduced in a previous lesson, you put this little link between the word, des amis, des amis, okay, I've been taking wa voiture here, voiture a car, okay, just add this S at the end, and then you get the plural form, des voitures. Okay, and then I've been taking back this livre, same thing, you just add S at the end, des livres. Okay, let's repeat them one more time. Un, une, des. Un ami, un soleil, un livre, une voiture, une école, une décision, des amis, des voitures, des livres. Please cover together l'article interrogatif. So it's really useful and we'll see that now. So l'article interrogatif, here you get the masculine form and it's quel. Quel means what. Okay, so that's what you'll use when you want to ask a, a question with what. Okay, and you've got a good example here. So quel est votre nom de famille? What is votre your, so the polite form of your, nom de famille, family name, last name, okay? Quel est votre nom de famille? What is your last name? Second example, quel est votre prénom? Prénom is first name. What is votre, the polite form for your? Quel est votre prénom? What is your first name? Okay, so you can see now, more in detail, that Nom, prénom are masculine words. And that's the reason why, in that case, you get to choose the article here according to the gender of the word it is connected to. Quel, masculine form, because nom is masculine. Quel, masculine form, because prénom is masculine. Okay, let's see now the feminine. And the good news is that, as usual in French, we write the thing differently, but then we can pronounce them the same way. And then the feminine form is written like that, Q-U-E-L-L-E, -E, but it's pronounced like the masculine form. Quel at the masculine, quel at the feminine. Okay, so it's basically same pronunciation. Okay, and then here we've got two examples. So, for the same reason as previously, we had this nom and then prénom, they were masculine words, so you, would ha you will have to, to put this quel form at the masculine. And then here, nationalité and adresse, so nationality, address, are feminine words, so it does mean that you will have to use this article interrogatif, quel, at the feminine form. Quel est, what is, votre, your, nationalité. What is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? Okay. Quelle est votre adresse? What is your address? Okay. So, let's repeat them. Quel est votre nom de famille? Quel est votre prénom? Quelle est votre nationalité? Quelle est votre adresse? Okay. So, remember one thing for the phonetics, okay, the way to pronounce them. Quel, masculine form here, will be pronounced exactly as the feminine form here.
quel. So only one sound. Okay? And then the second thing that you've got to remember, of course, you can, well, basically record these articles with the word they are connected to. So it does mean that if the word is at the plural form, then you will have to put the plural form. Uh, the rule in French, if you remember correctly from the previous lessons we've been lessons we've been doing, uh, is to put this final s at the end of the words to put the plural. Okay, so quel here for the masculine singular will become quel here masculine plural. Okay, quel here feminine singular will become Quel with the S feminine plural. And the good news is that you will pronounce them the same way. Alright, so quel, 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 and quel. Okay, remember that in some cases, of course, you will have to make this little liaison, you know, this little link between the words. So if the word or the verb or whatever is coming after is starting with the vowel of course you will have to put the, this little link but then if you pronounce it or if you pronounce them just like that quel, 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 quel okay? we're going to discover together les jours et les mois so the days and the month okay? les jours et les mois so let's see that together. And so we'll start with les jours de la semaine. Okay, semaine is week. Les jours, so you can see that it's the plural form. Huh? The days. Huh? Les jours of the la semaine. Les jours de la semaine, the days of the week. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. And in France... Uh, the week starts with lundi, Monday, lundi, lundi, okay, remember, UN is pronounced like un, lundi, 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 then mardi, mardi, so you can hear that you don't pronounce it that strongly, this R, huh? Mardi, mardi, okay? You don't need to go too deep like mardi, no, no, no. You don't move your tongue so it, does, it doesn't sound like mardi, no. It's really soft, mardi, 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 okay? The next one is mercredi, mercredi, Wednesday, mercredi, mercredi, okay? Next one, jeudi. Jeudi. Remember when you combine this E, U, you get the sound E. Jeudi. Jeudi. So I insist a little bit, so make it softer. Jeudi. Jeudi. Then E, N, nasal, and it's en. En. So remember, vendredi. 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 Okay? Then Samedi, samedi, don't insist on the E, uh, samedi, samedi, alright? And the last one, dimanche, dimanche, you get the sh, 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 and then A, N, an, an, dimanche, okay? Let's see them one more time. Lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, Vendredi, samedi, dimanche. Normally, in France, we tend to use this le weekend. So if we're talking about the weekend, okay, but then pronounce it the French way. Weekend. Le weekend, okay. But then in uh, other uh, French-speaking uh, countries, they, they tend to use this la fin de semaine, la fin de semaine, okay. But then in most of the cases, if you talk with French people, it will be le weekend, le weekend. If you want to talk about les mois de l'année, okay, année, year, mois, month, okay, les mois de l'année. 
so we'll see now the first one the first one January so it looks well it looks a bit the same no no wow no but anyway anyway janvier so that's the way to pronounce it janvier a n en okay and then ye 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 janvier then comes février février okay remember when you have this accent aigu on the top of e uh, then you pronounce it e okay there is a lesson regarding this topic so uh, don't be afraid and if you're not sure about that well try to practice it février février okay then Mars. Okay, so in a way, it's an exception because normally final s is not pronounced in French. Okay, we've got some exceptions, and this one is one of them. So Mars, pronounce the final s. Mars, Mars. Okay, then Avril, Avril, Avril. Nothing really tricky about this month. So I mean, for the pronunciation, Avril. Okay, here be careful because. People tend to try to pronounce it, to, to pronounce it the, 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 the English way. In French, remember when you combine this a ah and then e vowels, you get the sound a eh, a. Eh. So really open a, eh, okay, and then you pronounce it me me. Okay, so don't pronounce e. Uh, in, don't try to pronounce it. No, it's me me. So it's not my. It's me. Okay. And then here, well, it's a bit tricky, but still, e n goes like un, un, okay. And then you get ju, juin, 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 okay. Let's see them one more time. Janvier, février, mars, avril, mai, juin, okay. Second round. Juillet. Okay, you get this double L here. Ye, 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 ye. Juillet. Juillet. Don't pronounce this final T, E, T here at the end. E. Juillet. Juillet. So it's July. And then here, two options because, uh, well, two options are acceptable in French. The first one, you don't pronounce the final T. Ou. Ou. Second one, you pronounce it. Oot. 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 All right. So remember, first option, don't pronounce it. Oo. 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 Second option, you pronounce it. Oot. 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 Okay. Then, well, it's, it's quite simple normally for uh, English speaking persons, or then. It's quite close to uh, other uh, languages as well. So, septembre, septembre, septembre. Remember this E M en septembre. Br, br. You don't insist on the final E. Septembre, septembre. Then, same thing here. Don't insist on the final E. Octobre, octobre, octobre. Novembre, 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 okay, E M en, en, novembre, novembre, and the last one, décembre, 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 same thing, E M en, décembre, okay, so let's repeat them, juillet, remember this, yeah, yeah, yeah. juillet, ou, first option, août, second option, Septembre, octobre, novembre, décembre. Okay? The little gift. L'hiver, l'hiver, and it means winter. So I've been putting this M here just to tell you that it's masculine. L'hiver, le printemps. Le printemps, spring, l'été, l'été, summer, so I forgot to put it, but here I should put M because it's masculine, l'été, l'automne, 
l'automne. And same thing here, it should be M, automne, masculine, l'automne. Okay, so let's repeat it. L'hiver, le printemps, l'été, l'automne. And then, the last thing for this lesson, if you want to introduce the, the dates, okay, so if you want to tell what day it is uh, today, so, aujourd'hui means today, aujourd'hui, today, nous sommes, so we use the verb to be, okay, we are, nous sommes, le 8 juin 2012. Okay, so forget for the 2012, don't be afraid. We'll see that a bit later for the numbers. Okay, aujourd'hui, today, nous sommes, we are, le, you put the article, definite article, okay, and then you put the, the date here. Okay, you start with the, the number, the month, and then the year. Okay, or then, second option, aujourd'hui, so it doesn't change, it's here, today, c'est, it is, this is, and then you put the date, le 8 juin 2012. Okay? Le masculin et le féminin. So let's see how we will modify some words that are masculine into a feminine form here. Because for instance, we're talking about, well, whether professions or occupations. Here, student, assistant, actor dancer, baker, and then computer scientist. It looks quite, quite nice in English. Informaticien is nice, but still in English, computer scientist, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Okay, so uh, the rule in French is to add a at the end of a word, to put the feminine form, okay? So for instance, here we've got étudiant, and then we've got assistant here, okay? You just take it back here, étudiant, and then you will add this E uh, at the end without modifying the first part, okay? So it will, of course, change a little bit the pronunciation because you will pronounce it at the masculine form. Il est étudiant, okay? A-N-T, étudiant. Okay, but then for the feminine form, elle est étudiante. Okay, t, t, t. Okay, you don't really insist on the e, uh, but you insist quite much on the t. Elle est étudiante. Il est assistant. So don't pronounce the final t here. But for the feminine form, elle est assistante. Okay, étudiant, étudiante. Assistant, assistante. All right. Then we've got now the tricky ones. Il est acteur. Okay, so it's one of the irregular ones. E U R here. Acteur, and it, would, it will become ris. So E U R is becoming ris. Elle est actrice. So act is becoming actrice. Okay, and then we've got a second group with this e u r combination. Il est danseur. E u r is becoming euse. Danseuse. Okay, danseur masculine. Danseuse feminine form. Il est danseur. Elle est danseuse. Okay. Then we've got this group, like boulanger, boulanger, e r. So if you add this final e at the end, then you will have to put this accent here, accent grave. Remember, when you've got this e plus this accent grave, you pronounce it like e, really open e sound. Okay, so boulanger, boulanger. And then, feminine form, boulangère, boulangère. Same thing, don't insist too much on the final E, boulangère. Okay? Il est boulanger, elle est 
boulangère. All right? And the last group is I-E-N, informaticien. Yin, yin, yin. So that's the way to pronounce this I-E-N. Yin, yin. Okay? Informaticien. All right? And then, if you look carefully, then here, okay, you will have to double the N and then add this final E. Uh, okay? And you get the sound informaticienne. Sienne. Remember, E uh, and then double N, or then it could be double L or double uh, consonant here. You open your E. Uh, so it's E, informaticienne, okay? So I tend to insist a little bit, okay? Don't worry, I will pronounce it a bit more normally after. Il est informaticien, elle est informaticienne. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Il est étudiant, elle est étudiante. Il est assistant. Elle est assistante. Il est acteur. Elle est actrice. Il est danseur. Elle est danseuse. Il est boulanger. Elle est boulangère. Il est informaticien. Elle est informaticienne. We'll work on the, the vowels, les voyelles in this lesson and then we'll see uh, how uh, they behave when we combine them with uh, another letter so the vowels that we will work on we we won't take this uh, y vowel on purpose okay so we'll focus only on a e i o u okay so remember one more time a E, I, O, U. Okay, remember this U is usually can be quite quite tricky uh, for um, English speaking persons, especially the the difference between the U and the U. Okay, but we'll see that a bit later. So if you combine this uh, vowel A with the vowel I, okay, you will get the sound E. So really open E. Okay. And then if you combine it with the, the vowel U, then you will get the sound O. O. Alright, so, well, exactly the same sound as this O vowel here. So it's the same O. Okay? And then if you combine it with the, the letter N, in that case, you will get what we call a nasal. So it goes in your uh, nose. And then you get the sound an. An. Okay, uh, if you listen carefully, well, basically you don't you don't listen or you don't hear, sorry, uh, any N in uh, my pronunciation. En, en. Okay, let's see what happens with E. Uh. So E uh, combined with the vowel E will give you the, the sound E. So the same sound as we had previously here. Okay, so it's the same sound and it's E, so really open. And now if you combine it with the U, you will get the sound U, uh, U, uh. and if you combine it with N, then you get the sound AN. Uh. So the same sound as we had when we combine N with A. Uh, okay, AN, uh, AN. Uh. All right. So let's see now for E. So for E, obviously, if you get two uh, two times the same letter, then it it will be a a bit longer, so E, okay, same thing for uh, U, it doesn't really happen, and then here, that's the interesting one, if you combine E with N, then you will get the sound uh, 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 okay, in your nose, uh, alright, so let's see O now, if you combine O and E, you will get the sound wa, wa. Wa 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 wa. So make it repeat it like that. You know, wa 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 wa, and then after that only one wa. Okay. Then if you combine it with u, you will get the sound u. So as I said previously, the the, the difficulty, one of the big difficulty for uh, English speaking uh, persons is this difference between the u here and the u here. 
U U. Okay, so you, you'll have the, the, the time to, to work on that, but still it's U in that case. If you combine it with N, then you will get the sound on. Same thing, nasal, so in your nose, on. On. All right, let's see the, the last one. So if you combine U and E, you get the sound UI, UI, UI. All right, so really U. It's not U, okay, so it's U. Ui, ui, all right, and then well, basically it doesn't exist. This uo, and if you combine it with the n, then you get the sound un. So before we had the difference between this un here and this un here, but nowadays in France, at least, you don't make any difference between the two. Okay, so it's un here and un here. All right, so let's see them one more time. A, E, O, un, E, 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 un, I, un, O, Oa, U, On, U, Ui, Un. We'll discover les chiffres in this lesson. I hope you're ready because it's starting right now. Les chiffres. Zero. Zero. Okay, so remember, you get this z and then e accent aigu, z, ro. Okay? Then un. All right, so when you combine this u and n, you get the nasal sound un, un. Deux. Final X not pronounced, okay? De. Trois. Final S not pronounced. Trois. Quatre. Quatre. Okay? So remember that even if you get this U vowel here, basically you don't pronounce it. Because that's the rule in French. When we get this Q letter and then a vowel after, then we will, we will have to put this U. Okay? So... You get this Q, U, A, but then the sound that you will pronounce is K. Okay? Quatre. Quatre. All right? And next, cinq. 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 And be careful here, because even if it's ending with this X, well, you'll have to pronounce it like S. S, -s, -s, -s. Okay? So you get the six pronunciation. Six, six. Okay, so it's not six, it's six. All right. Then here, remember, P is not pronounced. Okay, it doesn't exist. So you get this set sound. Set, set. Okay. Then here, final T is pronounced. So, huit, huit. Remember in French, this H letter here okay uh, doesn't exist phonetically so we we don't really pronounce it okay so if you listen carefully you will only listen or hear these vowels at the beginning of the word huit huit okay and then neuf 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 okay and we'll discover a quite useful thing, because in Leçon B, if you remember carefully, uh, I did introduce the, the, the numbers uh, till uh, 9, and then we'll continue, so from 10 to 20, okay? De 10 à 20, okay, so let's start now. 10, okay, so remember, final X here is pronounced like S, 10, 10, okay? Then, 11. 11, okay, so O plus N give you the sound on, on, onze, onze, okay, final E doesn't exist phonetically, onze, okay, douze, douze, O, U, the two together will give you the sound O, okay, and then Z, douze, douze, all right. Then now, if you combine this E and E, you get the sound E, really open. Treize. Treize. Final E, 
as usual, not pronounced. Très, très. Okay. Then here, quatorze. So remember, Q and U here. Well, basically, you've got to put this U vowel because that's the rule in French. Even if you don't pronounce it, okay, so you will get the sound K here. K. Quatorze. Quatorze. Okay. Same thing here. U is, doesn't exist, so quinze. 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 All right. I N nasal. So it's un, un, quinze. 15. Okay, then it continues, of course. Now you get this 16, 16. Same thing, final E uh, doesn't exist. 16. E uh and E together, they give you the sound E, eh, E, eh, really open. 16, 16. Okay, then it becomes <laughs> logical now because if you look carefully, you've got this. This, okay, this, and then set. So if you remember this, it's here, it's 10, and then set, 7. Okay, so it's clear. But then for the pronunciation, deset. Okay, so you don't insist on the s. Deset, deset, deset. Okay, then 18. So you will make this little link between the two, the liaison. 18. 18, 18, okay, then 19, 19, 19, okay, E, U, E, 9, 9, 9, 19, and the last one, so this G letter is here, but you don't pronounce it, okay, and then final T, doesn't exist phonetically either, so basically you will only need to pronounce these three letters. So you've got V, V, and then you've got nasal, I, N, un, vin, vin, vin. Okay? Hi everyone, bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, and this is Unité de Leçon D. So let's see what we'll discover together in this lesson. And we'll work on les adjectifs possessifs. So really useful. Um, well, in French, as usual, we will have the difference between masculin, masculine form. So for the masculine form, we'll have mon, mon, ton, ton. Son, son, notre, notre, votre, votre, leur, leur. Okay, so let's be clear, you know, when we talk about les adjectifs possessifs, in English it will be my, your, uh, his, Uh, are, your, there, okay, but then in French, well, basically, we'll, we'll have the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural, and then keep in mind, we'll see that a bit later uh, when I will give you some examples, that in French, we don't decide whether it's masculine, feminine, or plural according to the subject, like in English, because in English, you put whether the masculine or the feminine according to the subject, but... We will, in French, put the masculine according to, or the feminine, or the plural, according to the word it is connected to. Okay? So it's quite important to just remember that, because uh, it will basically, it will be really important for the, the decision whether you put the masculine, or the feminine, or the plural form. Okay? So we saw first, now here, the masculine form. Let's check the feminine form. And it's ma. Ta, sa, okay, so you can see, it, well, well, of course differences, but then still, you know, it works like M, M, T, and then T, and S, S, okay, so, well, mon, masculine, ma, feminine form, ton, masculine form, ta, feminine form, son, masculine form, sa, Feminine form. And then the good news is that notre is the same, votre is the same, 
and then l'heure is the same. Okay, so you don't really have a difference between these three persons. You will have to use the same adjective possessive. Okay, so the only difference is there. Mon, ton, son, ma, ta, sa. Okay, and now let's see the plural part here. Okay, so for the phonetical or pronunciation aspect of it, then remember that this ES uh, here combined will give you the sound E. Okay, so you'll pronounce it like ME, 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 okay, TE, so logical, same pronunciation here, TE, SE, alright, so ME, TE, SE, okay, and then for the plural, NO, VO, and then LEUR. Okay, so remember, even if you've got this final S, you don't pronounce it, as it was the case already for this word. No, you don't pronounce the final S. Vo, doesn't you don't pronounce it. Leur. Okay, so if we say that one more time, it's me, te, se, and then no, vo, leur. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. So for the masculine, Mon père. Okay, so père means father. Okay, so father is masculine. And so you will put mon père. So you will put here the masculine adjective possessive, my father, just because father is masculine. Okay, so the, 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 the subject, the person who is actually talking about his father or her father, doesn't really uh, affect the fact that you use the masculine or the feminine here. You put the masculine because father is masculine. Okay, so vélo, bicycle. If you want to say my bicycle, you will say mon vélo. Okay, just because vélo is masculine. Un vélo and then mon vélo. All right, let's see now a few or two examples for the feminine. Uh, mother, mother is feminine. And then you will have ma mère. Ma Mère, my mother, ma mère. Okay, here you get voiture. Voiture means car, a car. Okay, and it's feminine, so une voiture. Same thing here. You will put the feminine form, ma voiture, ma voiture. Okay, and let's see now for the plural. So parents, parents, mes parents. Okay, because it's the plural form here. Okay, so you get the plural form here as well. Mes parents. Okay, and then ami, friends. Okay, it's the plural form, so it's mes amis. Okay, and then let's be purist and make the, this beautiful liaison between these two words. Mes amis. Mes amis. Mes amis. All right, so I hope it's clear because. Of course, as usual in French, we've got some exceptions. And the exceptions are for the feminine words. Like identité, for instance. Identité, so it does mean identity. Okay. Um, if you look carefully at this word, you can notice that it is starting with a vowel. So, E in that case. Okay, and then for aesthetical reasons, we think that ma identité, so the way that normally you should, uh, you should put uh, the feminine form, so ma identité, doesn't sound nice. So, for that reason, we put the masculine adjective possessive. So, remember, with the words feminine words that start with a vowel like i e here, identité, you will have to use les adjectifs possessifs masculins, so the masculine form. So it goes like mon identité, mon identité, so my identity, mon identité, mon identité. Okay, another example, adresse, so same thing here, adresse is a feminine word, but then it starts with a, okay, same thing, you will have to use adjective possessive masculin. Mon adresse, 
mon adresse. My address, mon adresse. Mon adresse. Okay, you can hear now this little link. So you get to pronounce this N. Mon adresse, mon adresse. Okay? And the last one I, I took, same thing. Opposition, opposition. Well, basically, feminine, but then it starts with the O. Mon opposition. Mon opposition. You make this link. Huh? Mon opposition. Mon opposition. So let's repeat it one more time. Mon identité. Mon adresse. Mon opposition. Okay? I hope everything was okay with you. Uh, so it was leçon D. Okay? So remember to check for the next lesson and the previous lessons there, here. And then you get, of course, more material at the following website www.imagier.net ok bye bye we work on les pronoms toniques so they're useful and normally we tend to introduce them quite fast in french because you will have to use them les pronoms toniques so if you remember remember we saw les pronoms personnels les pronoms personnels like je i tu you etc etc okay but then in that case when you want to use this pronoun tonique normally uh, you want to insist okay and then you want to use this moi form so moi is me so that's the main difference between moi me and then je i because je normally you will use that to construct a sentence as a subject okay normally this moi is not a subject, so it's not possible to put that right before a verb. It would be a mistake, okay? Moi, so it's me. Moi. So remember, this O-E combination gives you the sound wa wa wa. Moi. Okay? And then you get toi. Toi. For the masculine form, we get lui. 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 Okay, and for the feminine form, we've got L, L. So you can notice that, well, basically for the masculine, it does change because uh, pronoun personnel is il, okay, and in that case, pronoun tonique is lui, all right? But then for the feminine form, it's the same, so it's L, okay? And then, good news, same thing for the plural, nous, vous, okay, so they don't change. You get nous, and then you get vous, as for the pronoun personnel. And same thing here for the plural form, uh, third person of the plural. So the masculine form will change, and you get the sound e. Remember, final x not pronounced. E, e, and then plural l, l. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Moi, toi, lui. Elle, nous, vous, eux, elles. Okay? So, I did prepare a few examples. So, the first one, moi, j'aime le tennis. Okay? So, here you can see that you start the sentence with moi. Okay? So, me. Okay? And then, you have to put pronom personnel. Je. Okay, so in that case, you take the E uh away because the verb is starting with a vowel, okay? But then, j'aime. So this j'aime form, I like, or then I love, okay? Le tennis. Moi, j'aime le tennis. So basically, if you start with moi here, you want to insist on the fact that you really like uh, or you really love tennis. Okay, let's see the second example. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Okay, préférer to prefer, obviously. Okay, toi, tu préfères le golf. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Okay, and then here, so we've got here the masculine form. And here we've got the feminine form, so let's see the masculine form first. Lui, il adore le foot. Lui, il adore 
le foot. Ok So here, lui, pronom tonique, and then il, pronom personnel, adoré, to adore, le foot. We're talking about football here. Ok Elle, elle déteste, détester means to hate. Ok Le basket. And we're talking about basketball here. Basket. Ok Elle, elle déteste le basket. Okay, so even if you see them twice, I mean you've got this L, L, okay, then remember that in that case, basically you want to insist, really, so you put first pronom tonique, it does look the same as pronom personnel here, but still, you get two different pronouns here, pronom tonique and then pronom personnel, L, L déteste le basket, okay, same thing here, nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. Ok? So the difference between aimer here, like I love, ok? And aimer bien, normally when you put this bien after aimer, well it's because you want to insist on the fact that you like, you don't love something, you like it. Ok? Nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. Alright? Next example. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Natation is coming from nager, nager to swim. Ok? And then natation is the substantive form. Vous, vous détestez la natation. And then the two last examples. So first the masculine here and then the feminine here. So let's see the masculine form. E. So if you remember, it was E, pronom tonique. Il préfère, so préférer, to prefer, and then you can see that it's here, the plural form. Il préfère la marche. La marche is coming from the verb marcher, marcher to walk, ok? La marche. E, il préfère la marche. And then the feminine example. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Elles elles adorent le jogging. Ok? Let's read them one more time. Moi, j'aime le tennis. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Lui, il adore le foot. Elle, elle déteste le basket. Nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Eux, ils préfèrent la marche. Elle, elles adorent le jogging work on the questions, so les questions, and especially the little words that you will have to use or to put at the beginning of your questions, and the first example that we can see is quand, quand means when, okay, so let's see two examples, so if you start a question with quand, like in the first example here, quand arrivez vous, ok? Arriver is to arrive, ok? So, vous, second person of the plural, you can use that for a group of person or then you can use that for one person and that's the polite way to, uh, to use. Um, quand arrivez-vous? And now you can see that we've been changing the order, so normally, of course, the subject is before the verb, ok? But then, The correct way to make a question, if you start with this quand, is to change the order. So first you put the verb, then you put this pronom personnel. Okay? Quand arrivez-vous? Alright? And then the rule is like in French, you've got to raise a little bit your voice at the end of a question. Of a question. Quand arrivez-vous? Quand arrivez-vous? Ok. Can make this little link between the two. Quand arrivez-vous? Quand arrivez-vous? Alright. And then, well, when we talk, then we, we normally uh, have this option to, to drop this uh, rule. So, not to use this rule. So, just to put the first, the, the verb, and then the subject after. And uh, we tend to add this S que form here, est-ce que, okay, so and you'll get this, this question, so 
Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? It is exactly the same question. Okay, it is quite long if you compare it to the first one. Uh, it is more spoken. Okay, it is less formal, and that's normally what you'll hear if you talk with French people. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Okay, and then here you see that because you've been using this esque form, then you keep the normal order. So first the subject, vous, and then the verb. Okay, quand est-ce que vous arrivez? All right, and then don't be afraid to raise your voice a little bit at the end. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? You see? So it's not really the opera. You, you, you don't need to, to, to go really high, you know, but it's just a little bit. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? That's it. And the next one is où. Où means where. Where. Okay, so quand, when, remember, où, where. Two examples. Same rule, okay, so the formal or the classic way if you want to ask a question with who would be to change the order. So first the verb, then the subject here. Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? Where do you live? Habiter is to live. So you live like if you're talking about the place where you are living, okay? Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? And then same possibility, you just add this esque and then you keep the normal order of the sentence, so subject and verb. Où est-ce que vous habitez? Où est-ce que vous habitez? All right. Next. Pourquoi? Pourquoi is really useful because it's why. Okay, so remember, quand, when, où, where, pourquoi, why. Same thing here, okay, pourquoi, you should change the order. Okay, so first the verb and then the subject. That's the correct or formal or classic way of asking a question. Pourquoi venez-vous? Venir is to come. So why do you come? Pourquoi venez-vous? Pourquoi venez-vous? All right. Same rule here. If you want to add this s que, then you just keep the you just keep the, the, the classic order like subject and verb. Pourquoi est-ce que vous venez? Pourquoi est-ce que vous venez? Okay. And then, comment, comment is how? How? Comment venez-vous? How do you come? Comment venez-vous? Comment venez-vous? Comment est-ce que vous venez? Comment est-ce que vous venez? And then the last one. Combien? How much, how many, so in French we use this combien, how much, or how many. Combien de sucre, sucre means sugar, and then voulez-vous, okay, vouloir, to want, okay, so how many sugar did, do you want. Combien de sucre voulez-vous, combien de sucre voulez-vous, combien de sucre voulez-vous, and then same thing here, just add this s -ke. Combien de sucre est-ce que vous voulez? Combien de sucre est-ce que vous voulez? All right. Discover together le verbe faire, so the verb to do. Okay, so faire, faire is uh, really useful because we tend to use it uh, quite much in French. Okay, so it's, well, usually quite important to discover this verb at the right beginning. So le verbe faire. Je fais. Je fais. Fait. Remember final S not pronounced. Je fais. Tu fais. Same rule here. Final S not pronounced. Tu fais. Il, masculin, and then elle, féminin, fait. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle, fait. So if we take one second, actually you can see that here, here, and here you get the same phonetical form, so the same form that you will pronounce, okay? So you get je fais, tu fais, il fait, and then elle fait. It's the same, okay? Then, nous, so it's quite strange because French people tend to pronounce faisons, okay? So like here, 
this uh, E is not pronounced like normally we should pronounce it like E, eh, but then like E. Uh, okay? Nous faisons. Nous faisons. Okay? And then this one is a bit tricky, so you will have to remember that. And it's quite funny because many French people tend to make the mistake and tend to, to say vous faisiez, okay? Uh, but then no, 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 no. <laughs> it's vous faites. Vous faites. Okay? So remember, a final S here is not pronounced, and then this E uh, is not pronounced either. So, faites, faites. Vous faites. And il, plural, font, final T not pronounced, font, font, elles font. Okay, so I will repeat the whole thing one more time. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. We'll discover la forme négative. So if you want to say that you are not blah 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 doing something or so the negative form in French and so the negative form in French is composed of two elements. The first one is ne and then you get your verb and right after your verb you will have to put this pas. Okay, so first ne then the verb, and after that, pa. Okay, we write it P-A-S, okay, but as usual, final S is not pronounced, so it's pa. Okay? Remember one thing, in some cases, we will have verbs starting whether with a vowel, or then with H, 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 plus a vowel, and in French, H is not pronounced, okay, so for these verbs, a uh, will have to disappear and it will be written like that n okay then will come the verb and after that doesn't change it will be pa all right so let's see a few examples now so for n pa so if you get a sentence like il parle avec moi so il parle he is talking avec with Moi, me. Okay, remember this moi, uh, we introduced that uh, in this unit and it was a pronoun tonique. Okay, il parle avec moi. So if you want to put the negative form of this sentence, so remember, first part ne, so before the verb, then you put your verb, parle, basically you don't change it, just put it there, parle, and after that you put the second part, pas. Okay, then you get the sentence, il ne parle pas avec moi. And that's it. You've got your negative sentence here. Okay, let's see now how it will go with an apostrophe pas. Okay, so nous allons en France. Okay, so in that case, if you look, you've got the verb Aller, aller means to go, okay? Nous allons, nous allons, we are going, okay? En France, to France. Here, first letter is A, okay? Remember the rule, if it's not with a vowel like here, it is the case, you will have to drop and take away this E form, so that's the reason why we've got this N apostrophe like that. N'allons, nous n'allons. And then you don't really need to think, you just put this pas after the verb, en France. Nous n'allons pas en France. Nous n'allons pas en France. And that's it. Okay, second example here, it's with the verb habiter. Habiter is to leave, you know, when you, you introduce the place where you, where you live. Okay, and then here, I took this example or this verb just because, of course, it's starting with H, but as I said, you don't pronounce it, so the first sound you hear here is the vowel. And that's enough just to drop and to take away this E. Uh. So you will basically make it like in this example. You will put this N apostrophe. Elle n'habite pas dans cette maison. 
So, elle habite, she lives or she is living, dans, in, this house. Elle habite dans cette maison, and the negative form, elle n'habite pas dans cette maison. This lesson will work on les adjectifs démonstratifs. So, les adjectifs démonstratifs, in English, it would be this or these, okay? But then, as usual in French, we've got the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural, okay? So, we'll see that. So, for the masculine form, it will be ce, ce, and then it will be cette, cette. Okay, so as usual in French, remember, it can be tricky if a letter, uh, sorry, uh, um, an adjective like that, for instance, is ending, or it could be an article, is ending with a, okay, just because for some words starting with a vowel or with ash plus a vowel, then we will have to modify it, okay, and that's the reason why here we've got set. Okay, but then it's still the masculine form. Se, set. For the feminine, it will be set. So only one, set. And then for the plural form, it will be se. Okay, so let's see that again. Se, or then set. Féminin, set. So you can notice that phonetically these two are pronounced the same way. Okay, set here and then set here. And for the plural, se, se, really open this, e, e, se, okay? So let's see a few examples now. The first one, so I did take this train, train is train, okay? So it's masculine, so it starts with t, so no problem. You will put this, ce train, ce train, okay? It would be translated like this train, ce train, okay? Here you've got ordinateur. So, ordinateur, a computer, okay, and it's masculine, un ordinateur, okay, but if you, if you look carefully, it starts with O, okay, so vowel, and then you will have to take this set form, so the masculine form, but the one that will use with the words that start with vowels, or then H plus voyelle, okay, so set ordinateur, this computer, Cet ordinateur, okay? And then here, we've got the word homme, man, okay? But then it starts with H, as in French, H is not pronounced, so the first sound that we hear is O, okay? And then it will follow the same rule. You'll have to use the masculine adjective demonstrative, but this form, cet homme, cet homme, all right? Femme, woman, Cette femme, this woman, cette femme, cette femme, okay, and then the last one, personne, persons, pluriel, ces personnes, ces personnes, okay, so let's repeat them one more time, ce train, cet ordinateur, cet homme, cette femme, ces personnes, in this lesson, and we'll work on uh, the way to conjugate uh, les verbes réguliers, so the regular verbs of the first group, okay, and then with er, so let's start now. So, let's take an example. The example is parler, parler is to speak or to talk, okay, and then if you have a look at it like that, you can basically divide this verb in two parts. The first part, parle, and then second part, er, so it does mean that this verb ending with er, is belonging to the first group of verbs. In French, we've got three groups, okay? The two first are uh, regular, and the last one, the third one, is uh, irregular. So, this is one verb ending with er. It does mean that it belongs to the, the first group, and it won't be tricky or so difficult to conjugate. So, we'll see together how to conjugate this verb. The first person, like je, here, so you will put this parle again, so remember, and after that you just put the ending e. Uh. And then the way to pronounce it is je parle, 
parle. So remember, we put it, okay, but then we don't really pronounce it. Je parle, okay? Then for tu, you will have to put a s, okay? Phonetically, tu parles. So you've got the two first forms, you pronounce them the same way. You write them differently, of course, because you've got a here, and then you've got a and s, okay? But then phonetically, they are the same. Je parle, tu parles, okay? So let's see what you'll get for il and elle. And, well, as you see, you've got il parle, elle parle. So it's the same form here. So if you really want to only, only speak and only use orally the, the, the language, well, it's, it's quite easy to conjugate these verbs. Je parle, tu parles, il parle, elle parle. Okay? For nous, okay, we'll have, well, let's say the classical ending for nous, and it will be O-N-S. Classical, because you, you will see that with the other groups as well, it's quite common to have this O-N-S for nous. Okay? Nous parlons. Okay, remember final S is not pronounced, okay, and then this O N together, they will give you the sound on, on, okay, nous parlons, nous parlons, all right, let's see now for vous, vous parlez, okay, remember a Z when you combine them together, you get the sound E, vous parlez, all right, and the last one, so even if you've got this E N T, <laughs> don't hate me, but you won't pronounce these letters, okay? You have to write them for the plural form, but you don't pronounce them. So you get, il parle, elle parle. So the good news is that you get here, je parle, tu parles, il, elle parle. And then if you check it here, il, elle parle. So it's the same phonetical pronunciation or phonetical form, sorry, okay? And then you get nous parlons and then vous parlez, all right? So here, remember the endings, you will have to write them, okay? All right, so we'll take another example. Regarder is to watch, okay? So you can see that the verb is ending with a air, okay? So you take it, you just take this a air away and then you keep this radical form, like we say in, in French, only this form, okay? So you will get je regarde, tu regardes, il regarde, elle regarde, nous regardons, vous regardez, il regarde, elle regarde. Okay, so one more time here. Regarde, 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 and then regarde. So phonetically, only one form here. And then regardons, regardez. All right? Remember that even if this beautiful verb aller that we tend to use quite often because it means to go, okay? Even if it ends with a er, it is not regular at all. In this lesson, we will count together, yeah! So from 20 uh, to 50, de 20 à 50. I hope you're ready because it's starting right now. 20, 21. Okay, so remember to make this little link, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24, 24, 25, 25, 26, 26, so remember it's ending with X, but then we pronounce it S, 26, 27, remember set, it was this P disappear, you don't pronounce it, 27, 28, so here you make the, the liaison, 28, 
28, 29, 29, 29. Then here, remember this E N en en trente, trente, trente. Okay, don't insist on the E; it doesn't exist here. Trente, trente et un, trente et un, trente et un, trente deux, trente deux, trente trois, trente trois. Remember, final S doesn't exist. 33 34 34 34 Remember in French the rule is that you, if you start with well if you get this combination Q U A well you will pronounce it ka ka same thing for the other vowels okay so because that's the rule after Q normally we put U and then an another vowel but then this U well basically it's not pronounced okay so ka 4 34 35 35 36 36 37 37 38 38 39 39 40 Okay, so same rule as previously, as for 4, okay? K, 40, 40, okay? 41, 41, 42, 42, 43, 43, 44, 44, 45 45 46 46 47 47 48 48 49 49 50 50. Same thing here. Okay, remember that you get this Q, U, but then you don't pronounce the U. And then you get the nasal. 1, and then en. 50. 50. Okay? We'll discover together. Le verbe venir. Venir means to come. Okay, to come. So it's quite useful. And then you will have to use it uh, quite often in French. So let's see how you conjugate this verb at the present form. Okay, because... This verb is not regular, just wanted to tell you first, okay? So, the first form is je viens. Je viens, okay? Remember this i, 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 viens, viens, and then this nasal, final s not pronounced. Je viens. Tu viens. So, it's the same form, okay? Tu viens. Il, elle, vient. Final T, not pronounced. Il vient, elle vient. So, if we take one second just to have a look at the je, tu, il, elle forms, they are phonetically the same. Vient, vient, vient. Okay? You write the S, S, T, but then you pronounce these forms the same way. Okay? For nous, it will be different, because nous is here. Nous Venons, okay, O-N-S, classical ending for nous, okay, final S not pronounced, so O-N, on, venons, venons, nous venons, nous venons, okay, and then vous, venez, remember a Z combined like that, et, venez, venez, vous, venez, okay, and then the last form, so remember here, it's quite interesting because we've got this E vowel here, and then we've got a double N after, okay? And the rule in French is that when you get this E and a double vowel after, you will have to pronounce this E like E, E, all right? So, 
Vienne, 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 ok? Ils viennent, elles viennent. Ils viennent, elles viennent. Alright? E-N-T, you don't pronounce them. Ils viennent, elles viennent. Alright? So, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? This lesson will work on vocabulary and then the, the vocabulary connected to uh, la famille. So, so the, the, the family, la famille. And then we'll start with the, the grandparents. Les grands-parents. Les grands-parents. Remember, you don't pronounce this final S here. Grands-parents, okay? So, le grand-père, grandfather, le grand-père, remember, e accent grave like that, it's uh, this open e, uh, pe, pe, le grand-père, le grand-père. And then the feminine form, grandmother, la grand-mère, la grand-mère. Okay, so, les grands-parents, le grand-père, la grand-mère. Okay, so let's see now the parents. Les parents, les parents, le père, the father, le père, la mère, the mother, la mère. Okay, so les parents, the parents, le père, la mère. All right, so till now, I think that it's not really, really difficult to remember okay let's see now les enfants okay so first i don't make the liaison les enfants just for you to see that we've got this en and then we've got this en as well same pronunciation here enfant don't pronounce the t don't you don't pronounce the s enfant okay and now we can focus on the liaison here so you should make the little link les enfants les enfants, okay? Enfants, children. Les enfants, the children. So let's see. Uh, it will be the masculine form, so the son, okay? So it's le, and then even if it, you've got this L, well, basically you don't pronounce it, and then strangely you pronounce the final S. Le fils, le fils, le fils, le fils. And then the feminine form, the daughter, la fille. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this L, L here and E will give you the sound Y. La fille, la fille. Okay, so make the difference between the masculine form, le fils, and then the feminine form, la fille. Okay, so les enfants, le fils, la fille. Okay. And then the grandchildren, but then in French we use the petit, petit is like small, okay, so les petits enfants, make this liaison here, petits ans, petits ans, okay, les petits enfants, les petits enfants, so grandson would be in French petit fils, okay, so le petit fils, le petit fils, And then the feminine form, la petite t -t. So <laughs> I insist because here it's t, t. Okay, so really you need to make the difference between the masculine form, petit, and then the feminine form, petite t. Okay, so la petite fille. La petite fille. So let's repeat them. Les petits enfants, le petit fils, la petite fille. Okay, and then when you're talking about your uh, in-law uh, family, well, in, in French we use this beau and belle, so uh, it's beautiful. Okay, so the beautiful family you're talking about your in-laws. Okay, so la belle famille, la belle famille. Remember, i l i l l e i i. La belle famille. Okay. So, 
euh, père, ok, father, so father in law, ok, in French it's le beau père, the beautiful father, <laughs> le beau père. So remember this e a u combination of vowels only give you the sound o, beau, beau, ok, le beau père. Mother in law, la belle-mère, la belle-mère, la belle-mère, ok, so let's see them one more time, la belle-famille, le beau-père, la belle-mère, alright, and then brother-in-law, le beau-frère, le beau-frère, le beau-frère, so frère is brother, ok, and then feminine form, here you get Sœur, ok, so sister-in-law, la belle, so we put the belle form here because it's the feminine form, sœur, la belle sœur, la belle sœur. And in this lesson we'll discover the questions uh, in which you will find qui, que, or then quoi, ok, so let's discover now qui, ok, qui means who, ok, so if you want to ask a question regarding someone, like in these two examples, so the first one, who is he, qui est il, okay, so remember the formal, the normal way when we start a question with qui or then as we saw in the previous, previous lessons, okay, you will have to change the order and to put your subject, il, he, here, after the verb, qui est il, and then you make the liaison, qui est-il, who is he? Qui est-il? Qui est-il? Or then, let's see a little example here. Qui vient? Vient is venir. Uh, vient is venir. Yeah, is to come. Sorry. <laughs> so, qui vient? Who is coming? Avec toi? With you? Ce soir? This evening? Qui vient? Avec toi? Ce soir? So, he's coming with you this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Okay? Um, if you pronounce them normally, remember that you will have to raise your voice a little bit at the end of the question. So let's pronounce them the normal way. Qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Okay? Second one is que. So, qui, who, que, what? What, okay, and then we'll see two examples here. Que fais-tu? Okay, fais is coming from faire, faire means to do, okay. Que fais-tu? So what are you doing? What do you do? Okay, que fais-tu? Same thing here, remember, que, so you, you start a question with que, then you get to change the order, you get to put the subject after the verb, okay. Que fais-tu? And it's a question, que fais-tu, que fais-tu, okay, and here, que veux-tu, so veux is coming from vouloir, vouloir, to want, que veux-tu, what do you want, okay, que veux-tu, regarder, regarder is to watch, à la télévision, well, at the television, que veux-tu, regarder, à la télévision, so let's read it normally now. Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? Okay, so you can hear that I've been raising a little bit my voice at the end. And then the other option is quoi. So quoi means what as well. So you will tell me, oh, you get two what here. You get que and quoi. Yeah, for a good reason. Look at that. Well, tu fais quoi? So, uh... I've been just taking the same question as we had here, this que fais-tu, what do you do, what are you doing, okay, but then if you're using this quoi, then it does mean that you don't start the question with it, you just put it here, for example, at the end, okay, tu fais quoi, it is exactly the same meaning as this question, okay, but then you can see that you just keep 
the normal order of the sentence subject verb okay in that case you definitely need to raise your voice at the end okay tu fais quoi tu fais quoi and then i took the same example as we had here okay tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision okay so let's raise the voice at the end to make it clear that it's a question tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision Okay, so let's repeat. Qui, who, qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Que, what? But you start the question with it. Que fais-tu? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? And then quoi? You don't start the question and it, meet, and it means what. Tu fais quoi? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? In this lesson, we'll just focus on the short thing but quite useful, les présentations. Okay, so the first thing when you meet someone and you want to know the name of this person, well, that's the common question or the normal question that you will have to use. Comment, so how, vous appelez-vous? Okay, we've been seeing uh, in unit one, if my memory is correct, the verb s'appeler, so to call oneself. Okay, when you introduce yourself, you use this uh, s'appeler verb. Okay, so that's the reason why it will look this way. Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay, so, comment vous appelez-vous? So, what's your name? How are you calling yourself? If you want a, a direct translation, but it's, it sounds a bit strange in English, but then that's the question. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right. The other possibility that we've got is to keep the normal order. So, vous vous appelez, and then we put this comment thing at the end of the question okay so in that case remember to raise your voice at the end vous vous appelez comment vous vous appelez comment okay so it is exactly the same question okay it is a bit less formal this second option okay because the first one is the classic option that we've got we start with how and then we change the order we put the subject after the verb, okay, but then it is, more, I mean, completely correct to, to, to ask a question like that. Vous vous appelez comment, okay? And then the other possibility would be, quel est votre nom? What is your, votre nom? Name. What is your name? Quel est votre nom? Quel est votre nom? Raise a little bit. Quel est votre nom? Okay, so let's see them one more time. Comment vous appelez-vous? Vous vous appelez comment? Quel est votre nom? All right. Uh, in the first example, we've been using this vous form, so the polite form that normally we should use when we meet a person for the first time. Okay. But then let's uh, let's be frank that if you're young and uh, if you're meeting other uh, young persons, then you can use this uh, tu form, uh, so the less formal way. Okay. So the question will look like that. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Okay. Or then, same option that we've got. Tu t'appelles comment? So you put this comment at the end. Okay, don't forget to raise your voice because it's a beautiful question here. Tu t'appelles comment? Tu t'appelles comment? And then, quel est ton nom? What is your name? Quel est ton nom? Or other options. So I've been putting this this option for this uh, tu, okay, you, the less formal one, and not for for the vous because uh, it is it is quite spoken this uh, this this way. C'est quoi ton nom? Well, if you want to translate it directly, it's what your name? Okay, it looks really or it sounds really strange in English, but still it's possible in French. Uh, it is it is not formal at all, of course. Okay, so uh, don't use that uh, if it's quite important or if uh, the situation is quite formal. Okay, c'est quoi ton nom? C'est quoi ton nom? Okay, and then if you want to, well, present yourself, then remember we're using this appeler, s'appeler, okay, to call oneself, okay. Je m'appelle, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois.
Okay? I call myself Vincent Lefrancois. All right? But then that's the, the, the way we use to present ourselves. Okay? Other option would be to use, not to use this s'appeler to call oneself, but to use to be, which is totally possible. Je suis Vincent Lefrancois. Je suis Vincent Lefrancois. I am. Okay? Je suis Vincent Lefrancois. And then, third option, mon nom, my name, okay, mon nom est, is, mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois, mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois, okay, so let's see them one more time, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois, je suis Vincent Lefrançois, mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. This lesson will discover uh, la situation de famille. So if you want to say what is your uh, situation, your personal situation, then that's the correct lesson to watch now. Let's start. Je suis célibataire. So I know that many of you will laugh when they will see this uh, beautiful célibataire word. doesn't have any uh, other indication but the fact that you are single. Okay, so if you want to say that you are single, whether it's uh, the masculine form or the feminine form, it will be like that. Je suis célibataire. I am single. Okay, second option. J'ai un copain. Okay, boyfriend. Boyfriend would be copain. Okay, and then it's the feminine form here. Girlfriend, copine. J'ai, so j'ai, I have. Okay, j'ai un copain. I have a, boy, a boyfriend. J'ai un copain. Féminin, j'ai une copine. I have a girlfriend. J'ai une copine. Okay? So if you're in, in couple, en couple, je suis, I am, je suis en couple. Je suis en couple. So here you want to indicate that you are living with someone, but then you are not married. Okay? Je suis en couple. You can make the liaison here. Je suis en couple. Okay? And then, fiancé, engaged. All right? And then, here you've got the masculine form. I've been putting here the feminine form. All right? Uh, so you... lesson we'll see how to conjugate the verbs ending with er so not all the er verbs are belonging to the second group but 
some of them and then we'll see how to conjugate them at the present form okay so we'll take an example the example is finir so finir means to finish okay and then you can see that it's ending with er all right so we'll do it like that we'll divide it in two so f e n and then we we'll take away this er ending all right and we'll just keep this form here f e n to construct the present so you take it and you put it here and after that you will add this ending so for je it will be e s je fini remember final s is not pronounced je fini okay tu fini so e s as well like we had for je so same way to pronounce it as well you don't pronounce the final s tu fini il elle fini so i t final t not pronounced il elle fini so je fini tu fini il fini phonetically it's exactly the same form for these persons okay so it's quite good if you want only to talk and not to write so just focus on this fini form you know that it's for je tu and il elle okay but then for nous so have a look nous finissons okay e s s o n s ils sont nous finissons finissons okay final s not pronounced nous finissons vous finissez vous finissez okay a z at the end gives you the the sound a okay finissez finissez vous finissez il finisse so remember as usual when we get the verbs e n t not pronounced il finisse elle finisse all right so let's see them one more time je finis tu finis il finit elle finit nous finissons vous finissez ils finissent elles finissent all right let's take another example unir to unite okay same rule we just keep this un and then you spot the ending you take it away and you will keep the un to construct so juni same way tu uni il uni elle uni nous unissons vous unissez ils unissent elles unissent okay so it's the same exactly the same so same group same way to uh, conjugate it okay let's take choisir third example you spot it ending with er here choisir means to ch to choose okay then same way je choisis tu choisis il choisit elle choisit nous choisissons vous choisissez ils choisissent elles choisissent and we'll discover together well the plural form how to construct or how to make uh, a plural form so it's le pluriel en français so let's start now so we'll take this example okay basic example a friend un ami un ami okay un ami okay so here you can see that we've got this uh, article indéfini un the masculine form singular form and then we've got ami friend like that uh, at the singular form as well so if we want to construct the plural form well obviously the article will change okay uh, we saw previously that uh, the plural article was de in that case and then we keep the same word so ami and the rule goes like that you get to add at the end of the word s okay in that case and as in most of the cases you won't pronounce it but you will have to put it okay and so you've got de ami okay and if you make the the liaison so the link between the two you will get des amis okay des amis so ami remember 
doesn't change even if you get to write the s then you don't pronounce it okay and now let's see a few examples so this one une femme une femme okay so if we think about the rule that we saw previously then une is changing and then the article become de okay femme you write it like it was at the singular form and then you just add this s at the end and as we said you don't pronounce it so you get des femmes okay des femmes so une femme singular and then des femmes right and then un homme if we make this little link between the two un homme un homme un homme and then we'll put this word at the plural form so same thing here so this uh, article indéfini un is becoming de in that case and then you rewrite the word homme and after that you just put the s at the end you don't pronounce it so you get des hommes des hommes des hommes okay un homme singular form des hommes plural form Okay, and then I took uh, well this example with this article défini le. Okay, so the the le livre le livre. Okay, if you want to put the plural form, then the article here becomes les. So that's the plural form. Okay, les, and then same rule. You just write livre, and then you put s at the end, but then you don't pronounce it. Les livres. Le livre, les livres. So it's quite interesting uh, in this example here, because if you listen carefully, le livre, les livres. So the only way to know whether it's singular or plural is to pronounce correctly the article, in that case, le, and here, les. So it's really this le, e, uh, and then les, e. Eh that will make the difference between the singular form and the plural form okay as usual in French we've got exceptions so you get words uh, that will end with this e, a, u combination of vowels like for instance un, o so remember when you get these these vowels like that then you get only the sound o Okay, une o. So in that case, well, you won't add the s as uh, like we saw previously. But then it will be the rule is that you get to put x here at the end. But then same rule, you don't pronounce it. Des o. Okay, une o. Des o. All right. Second group, words ending with a. Here is an example, un tuyau, okay, same rule here, you won't add S at the end, but instead of S you will put X, okay, des tuyaux, same rule, you don't pronounce it, des tuyaux, okay, un tuyau, des tuyaux, so the only difference will be with the article because the word will be pronounced the same way and then the last group is uh, the words ending with e, u, e. so let's take one example un feu un feu and basically the same same rule you don't put s but you will put x instead and then you don't pronounce it des feux un feu des Feu. Okay, there is another group of words. So, because normally uh, the words ending with the uh, o u, like that here, o u, and then uh, the sound is u. Okay, normally these words just behave like the others, so uh, you just need to put s at the end. But of course, as usual in French, we've got few exceptions. So, I've been listing all the exceptions of the OU ending you know, words that will 
well, like we saw previously, not take uh, S, but then take X at the end, okay? But still, as usual, it's not pronounced, so it doesn't really affect the pronunciation, but it's just for you if you want to write them correctly at the plural form. Remember, it's not S, but it's X, okay? So the first one, un bijou, okay? So I did put the translation here. Pluriel, des bijoux. Okay, then, un caillou, un caillou, plural, des cailloux. Okay, remember, you don't pronounce it, the, the, the final X. Then, un chou, okay, remember, when you combine this C and H, you get the sound sh, sh, sh. Chou, un chou, pluriel, des choux. Okay. Un genou, un genou, des genoux. Un hibou, un hibou, des hiboux, des hiboux. Un joujou, un joujou, des Joujou, des joujou. Un pou, un pou, des pou, des pou. Okay, so the good thing, if you remember carefully what uh, I've been introducing so far, is that the main main group of uh, words are actually you, you only need to add s at the end and then you well basically you don't pronounce the the, the the s or then the exceptions you will like these ones here you will have to add this x at the end but still you won't pronounce uh, the, the, the x okay um, but still as usual we've got exceptions so a uh, few exceptions not that much but then uh, these exceptions are really, really strange because it does mean that the pronunciation will change. Okay, so we'll take this one, un boeuf, un boeuf, and then at the plural, well, you just write it like we saw previously, so you just add this S, but then pronunciation changes quite much because you get des boeufs des bœufs, all right, un bœuf, des bœufs, all right, then, un oeuf, un oeuf, des oeufs, okay, and we'll make the, the liaison here to make it sound more beautiful, des oeufs, des oeufs, all right, un oeuf, des oeufs, and then the last one, this is probably the, 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 the most strange one. Un oeil, un oeil, un oeil, des yeux, des yeux, des yeux, 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 okay? Don't pronounce the final X as usual. Yeux, yeux, des yeux, all right? Let's cover together le verbe Pouvoir. Pouvoir means uh, to can, okay, so it's quite useful. And then we'll discover it because, uh, well, it's not a regular verb, so it's, uh, it's always quite, uh, quite interesting to take a few minutes to really work on it and uh, try to uh, remember the way it is conjugated at the present form, okay? So the first form that we'll have is je, as usual, so je peux, okay? Final X not pronounced here, okay, so you get the X but you don't pronounce it, so basically you get the sound peu, peu, je, peu, okay, so I can, je, peu, okay. Then, tu, tu, peu, same pronunciation and same, same uh, spelling or writing, okay, P-E-U-X, okay, you don't pronounce the final X, tu, peu, okay, je, peu, tu, peu. Then, il, elle, peu. So you will put T at the end, you don't pronounce it. Il peut, elle peut. 
Okay, so if you look carefully, you've got p here, you've got p here, and you've got p here. Okay, so for the three first or four, because uh, there is the feminine form as well, for the four four first persons here, well, it's the same phonetical form. It's p. Okay, and then nu. So a classic ending for nu. This uh, o n s ending for nu. Okay, nu pouvons nu pouvons. Okay, you don't pronounce the, the final S. Nous pouvons. Mm -hmm. Then, vous pouvez. Okay, classic ending as well for the vous form. A Z like that, okay? Remember, you pronounce it E, E. Okay? Vous pouvez. Vous pouvez. And then, plural form. Ils, elles, peuvent. Ils, elles, peuvent. Okay, so uh, be be careful because uh, as you can see, you've got this e u here, e u here, e u here, and then it's coming back here as well. Okay, so the only o u o u that does connect to the infinitive here, pouvoir, it's only for nous and vous. Okay, so let's read them one more time. Je peux, tu peux, il peut, elle peut, nous pouvons. Vous pouvez, ils peuvent, elles peuvent. Okay. As usual, as usual, this ending, this e n t ending, you write it, you don't pronounce it. Okay. Pev, pev, pev. Okay. So it's really useful. Uh, you should really, I mean, definitely know it by heart. Okay. So try your best. Uh, well, watch again this video if you need it, and then uh, I hope it will enter in your head quite easily. Okay, uh, let's see some example now. Je peux chanter. Okay, je peux chanter. So you can see that in that case when you construct a verb or sorry, you construct a, a sentence with uh, the verb uh, pouvoir, here you've got a second verb, chanter, and it means to sing. Okay, so I can sing. Uh, well, you should all the time put the second verb at the infinitive form. Okay, so when we talk about the infinitive form, normally it's the basic form of the verb. Okay, uh, je peux chanter. Another example: Tu peux partir. Partir is to leave. You can leave. Tu peux partir. All right. Same thing here. Okay, second verb. Well, basically coming right after, of course, and then at the infinitive form. All right. Elle peut dessiner. Dessiner is to draw. Elle peut dessiner. She can draw. Okay. Elle peut dessiner. And in this lesson, we will try to focus on le verbe devoir. Devoir means to must. Okay. So it's quite useful. And especially, it's not a regular verb, so it's always good to uh, spend a few minutes on the conjugation at the present of this verb. Okay, so let's start now. Let's see, so le verbe devoir to must at the present form. Je dois. Okay, remember, final S is not pronounced. Je dois. O, E, when you combine the two, you get the sound wa, wa, wa. Je dois. Okay. Tu dois. Final S not pronounced. Tu dois. Il, elle, doit. Final T not pronounced. Il, doit, elle, doit. Okay? So if you have a look at these forms phonetically, they are the same forms. Okay? So, doit, doit, and then doit. Okay? And then, nous is coming. Nous devons okay classic ending o n s for nous okay you just pronounce this on o n this nasal okay and then the s final s is not pronounced nous devons nous devons okay nous devons well basically we must okay and then vous devez remember classic ending for vous here a z but then you pronounce this combination of two letters, e, e, devez, devez, vous devez. All right, and then the last one, ils doivent, 
So same thing, classic ending for the plural form, e n t here. Okay, but then you don't pronounce it. Doive, doive, elle doive, il doive, elle doive. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Je dois, tu dois, il doit, elle doit, nous devons, vous devez, ils doivent, elles doivent. All right, so let's see a few examples now. The first one, je dois étudier. Étudier is to study, okay? So it's a verb, and then the rule in French goes like that. If you get to put two verbs in a sentence, like here, the second one must be at the infinitive form. So when we talk about the infinitive, it's the basic form of the, the verb, okay? So, étudier, study. Je dois étudier, I must study. Je dois étudier, okay? Then, il doit choisir, okay? Same thing here, choisir means to, to choose, okay? And so, I did put here the infinitive form, so the basic form, IR form, il doit choisir, okay? He must choose. And the last example, nous devons répondre. Répondre is to answer, répondre here, okay? Nous devons répondre. We must answer. Nous devons répondre. Okay? We are going to discover together uh, European countries, so les pays européens. Okay? So let's start now with les pays européens. And the first one, la Grèce. La Grèce. Okay? So remember, gr, gr. And then this accent grave like that open. Grèce. Okay? La Grèce. Le Portugal. Le Portugal. L'Espagne. L'Espagne. Okay? Don't insist on the final E because basically it's not pronounced. L'Espagne. Nye, nye, nye. L'Espagne. L'Espagne. L'Italie, l'Italie, l'Italie. Okay, so you can see that for these two countries here, as they are starting with a vowel, like here, okay, as we saw in a previous lesson, the article is modified and then it's L apostrophe, like that, okay. Le Luxembourg. Okay, final G not pronounced, and then when you combine this E, M here, you get the sound EN, EN. You don't pronounce the M at all, it's this nasal EN, okay? Le Luxembourg. Le Luxembourg, okay? La France. La France, okay? A, N here, nasal EN, EN. La France. Okay? We continue. Les Pays-Bas. Final S here, not pronounced. Same thing here. Pays, Pays, and then Bas. Les Pays-Bas. Okay? Then, l'Irlande. Remember, this is E, and it should pronounce, it should be pronounced like E, E. Irlande. Irlande. Okay, A N en D and final E not pronounced. Irlande. Le Royaume Uni. Le Royaume Uni. Le Royaume Uni. Okay. L'Allemagne. L'Allemagne. Nye, 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 nye. Remember this G, N, E, it can be quite tricky at the beginning to produce, I mean, the sound, nye, okay? But really, you should work on that because it's, it's quite, well, it's not coming all the time, but it's not rare. I mean, the sound is not rare in French, okay? Nye. L'Allemagne, l'Allemagne, okay? La Belgique, okay? Remember, Q, U, E here, 
you will get only the sound k, k, okay? Belgique, Belgique. So it's not Belgique, uh, not at all, okay? Uh, because it's only the k, k, Belgique, okay? Le Danemark. So same sound here, this k and then this q, u, e, well, they will produce the same sound here. Belgique, le Danemark, okay? L'Autriche, okay, remember, sh, sh here. L'Autriche, l'Autriche, okay? La Suède, d, d, la Suède, Suède. Remember, uh, accent grave, it's really open, e, su, e, Suède, Suède, la Suède. La Finlande, I N here nasal un, A N nasal en, and then D final E uh, not pronounced. La Finlande, okay. L'Estonie final E uh, not pronounced. L'Estonie, L'Estonie. La Lettonie. So remember when you've got this E uh, and then a double letter like that, T, T, okay, then you will have to open your E uh, and it will become E, LE, Lettonie, LA, Lettonie, LA, Lituanie. Remember in French, <coughs> sorry, H doesn't exist, okay, so you don't pronounce it and it's LI, TU, A, NI. Lituanie, la Lituanie. Okay, continues. La Pologne, ni, ni, again. La Pologne. La République Tchèque. So remember, Q, U, E, K, K, Tchèque. La, and then here as well, République. K. La République Check, okay. La République Tchèque. Chypre. Chypre. So remember, we've got this Y letter here, but then phonetically, when you pronounce it, it's like I, okay. Ch Chypre, okay. Malte. Same thing here. You don't insist on the final E. Malte. Malte. La Slovenie. Remember, you get this E uh, accent aigu here. It's E, E. Slovenie. Final E, uh, as usual, not pronounced. La Slovenie. Okay. La Hongrie. So remember, H doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. So it starts with O N, ON, ON, and then GRI, GRI. Final E, uh, not pronounced. La Hongrie. La Hongrie. Okay? Les nationalités. So basically I've been um, making uh, this uh, nationalities uh, lesson based on the previous uh, lesson. So leçon D. Okay? So I definitely invite you to check the leçon D if you want uh, that everything is uh, clear for you. Okay? But then les nationalités. And it's starting right now. La Grèce. Grec. So I will put each time the masculine form for the nationality. Grec. And the feminine form here for the nationality. Okay. So you get the country. La Grèce. And then you get Grec. Masculine form. Grec. Feminine form. You write them differently but then... If you listen carefully, grec, grec, you pronounce them the same way. Okay? Le Portugal, portugais, portugaise. Okay? So listen carefully. Portugais, portugaise. The only difference between the two, as usually when we'll have some, uh, well, nationalities ending with A-E-S, like that, E, and then the feminine form, 
as okay it will be only in this z sound the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form okay masculine portuguese you don't pronounce the s feminine form portuguese you pronounce this z sound okay and then l'espagne espagnol nye, nye, nye. remember espagnol espagnol so you've got this final E uh, for the feminine form, but then phonetically it's the same. L'Italie, Italien, Italienne. Remember, when you get this E uh, followed by a double consonant like here, then you will have to open it. E, Italienne, Italienne. Okay? Le Luxembourg, Luxembourgeois. Luxembourgeois, and then feminine form, Luxembourgeoise. Okay, same thing here, only difference, joie, 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 z, z, okay, you insist on it. Luxembourgeois, masculine form, and then Luxembourgeoise, feminine form. Then, la France, français, française, okay, c'est, and then says, okay? Français, française. All right? It continues. Les Pays-Bas, néerlandais, néerlandaise. Néerlandais, néerlandaise. Okay? L'Irlande, irlandais, irlandaise. Le Royaume-Uni, Britannique, okay, only one form, whether it's masculine or feminine, Britannique. L'Allemagne, Allemand, Allemande, okay, same thing here. En, okay, you don't pronounce the final D, but then you pronounce it here for the feminine form. Allemande, d, d, okay, Allemand. Allemande. La Belgique. Belge. So only one form here for the masculine and the feminine form. Le Danemark. Danois. Danoise. Z. Hein? Okay, insist on that. Danois. Don't pronounce the final S. Danoise. Here you pronounce it. L'Autriche, Autrichien, Autrichienne. So same thing here. You get E and then double N. You open the E. E. Autrichienne. Okay. Autrichien, Autrichienne. La Suède, Suédois, Suédoise. Okay. Suédois. Suédoise. La Finlande. Finlandais. Finlandaise. Finlandais. Finlandaise. L'Estonie. Estonien. Estonienne. Same thing here. Double N, E, and then you open it. E. Estonienne. Estonienne. La Lettonie, Letton, Letton. Letton, Letton. La Lituanie, Lituanien, Lituanienne. Same thing here. You open the eh. E, e, Lituanienne. Okay? Lituanien. Lituanienne. La Pologne. Polonais. Polonaise. Polonais. Polonaise. La République tchèque. Tchèque. Okay, so here as well, you've got only one nationality. So whether for masculine or feminine form, it will be the same. Check. Okay. Chypre, same thing here. Chypriote. 
She remember this Y is pronounced like E. Okay, she priot, she priot. Okay, Malte, Malte, Maltese. So remember, as I said previously, the only difference is e -es. Malte, Maltese. La Slovenie. So only one form here, Sloven, Sloven. Remember, E accent grave, you open it, E, Sloven. La Hongrie, Hongrois, Hongroise. Okay, Hongrois, Grois, Hongroises. Okay, so here, final S not pronounced for the masculine form, and then you pronounce it here. For the feminine form, hongrois, hongroise. Okay. Les Amériques, les Amériques. So let's see now. Les États-Unis. Okay. So if we make every links, we'll have it here and then here. Okay. Les États-Unis, les États-Unis. Le Canada, le Canada, le Mexique, le Mexique, x, x, Mexique, it's really the x, huh? le Mexique, and then remember this q, u, e, it's only k, k, Mexique, okay, le Brésil, le Brésil. Okay, you will pronounce the final L here, and then remember, uh, accent aigu goes like E, Bré, Brésil, le Brésil. L'Argentine, okay, so you've got this nasal here, en, l'argent, and then tin, tin. Don't pronounce the final E, uh, it just gives you the, the, the pronunciation of the N, in, in, l'Argentine, l'Argentine, le Chili, le Chili, okay, remember, C-H, okay, Chi, Chili, le Chili, la Bolivie, okay, final E, uh, not pronounced, la Bolivie, La Bolivie. All right, so uh, I assume everything is clear. We can repeat them one more time. Les États-Unis, le Canada, le Mexique, le Brésil, l'Argentine, le Chili, la Bolivie. Okay, and then we'll see now the nationality. So you will see here each time first the masculine form and then the feminine form okay so les états unis américains so when you talk about the nationality américain masculine form un un américain and then feminine form américaine américaine okay it's really open this ae e américaine okay <coughs> le canada Canadien, yin, 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 here, Canadien, Canadienne, yen, yen, remember, e, uh, here you've got double n, so you've got to open the, the, e, uh, so it will become e, Canadienne, okay, le Mexique, Mexicain, un, here, like we had in uh, American, a, i, n, Mexicain, and then Mexicain, Mexicain. Le Brésil, Brésilien, yin, yin, Brésilien, like we had for Canadien, Brésilien, feminine form, Brésilienne, yen, yen, Brésilienne. Okay. And then l'Argentine, Argentin, yen, gives you this. Un sound. 
argentin, ok, and then argentine, argentine, ok, if you look carefully, well, basically the feminine form is the same as the, the name of the country, ok. Le Chili, Chilien, Chilien, yin, yin, Chilien, Chilienne, Chilienne, ok, and then la Bolivie, Bolivien, yin, same, Bolivien, and then feminine form, Bolivienne, Bolivienne. Okay. This lesson will discover together le verbe attendre. So attendre means to wait. Okay. So it belongs to the third group of verbs. So not uh, the regular one, the irregular. So that's the reason why it's quite important to take a few minutes to uh, discover together the way to conjugate this verb at the present form. Okay. So let's see now how it will go. So the first form will be j'attends. J'attends. Okay, you get D and S, well basically you don't pronounce them, okay, and then you get only the, the sound attend, nasal here, en, en, j'attends, okay, second form, tu attends, okay, you can see that, well, it is exactly the same one, so same way to pronounce it, attend, okay, il attend, elle Attend. So the only difference between this one, so this il form and the tu or je form, okay, if you want to write, it's just that if you look carefully, you don't have the final s here, okay, but then basically if you want to only pronounce or only speak, then, uh, well, it's exactly the same way to pronounce these forms, okay, j'attends, tu attends, il attend, elle attend. Okay, but then nous is coming here, all right, and then we've got the classic ending for nous, so O N S, okay, you don't pronounce the S, so you get only this on sound, okay, attendons, nous attendons, so we'll make the, the link between the two, la liaison, nous attendons, nous attendons, vous form. Same thing, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay? When you combine the two, you get the sound E, E, okay? Vous attendez, attendez, okay? Let's put here the liaison, the link. Vous attendez, vous attendez, okay? And the last one, same thing, classic ending for il, elle, at the plural form, E, N, T, but then you don't pronounce them. Il attend, de, 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 okay, so remember you get to pronounce this, de, 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 at the end, okay, elle attend, all right, if you make the link, ils attend, elles attend, okay, so let's read them, j'attends, tu attends, il attend, elle attend, nous attendons, vous attendez, ils attendent, elles attendent. Ok? So I've been making few sentences just to show you how it works on the meaning. J'attends le train. So le train, the train, I wait. Ok? I wait for the train, but then j'attends le train. Ok? Tu attends avec moi. So you wait and then avec means with moi, me. You wait with me. Tu attends avec moi. Il attend sa femme. Ok, remember, sa, it's the possessive, his in that case, and then femme, wife. Il attend sa femme. Nous attendons tranquillement. Nous attendons tranquillement. So here, I wanted to show you how it could work if you put this tranquillement. So tranquillement is uh, quietly uh, and it's uh, an adverb. Okay, it's ending with 
mon like that, which is one of the classic ending for the adverbs. We'll have the time to, to see that a bit later. But then, yeah, quietly is tranquillement. Nous attendons tranquillement. So basically you put this adverb after your verb, okay? Nous attendons tranquillement. Vous attendez les enfants. Okay, children, les enfants. Vous attendez les enfants. Elles attendent votre réponse. Réponse, answer, and then remember, votre, it's the possessive, your. Elles attendent votre réponse. Okay? So I will read them one more time, and uh, I will read them at my normal speed. Okay? Just for you to get used. If, because I, I've been reading them quite slowly when, when we were just uh, see, well, we were covering them uh, previously, okay? So, j'attends le train, tu attends avec moi, il attend sa femme, nous attendons tranquillement, vous attendez les enfants, elles attendent votre réponse. Le verbe... Le verbe répondre. Répondre means to answer. So it's quite useful. And then, uh, well, it belongs to the third group of uh, verbs. So we'll see how to conjugate this verb. Répondre at the present form. So let's see now the first form. Je réponds. Je réponds. Okay, so you can see that D and S here are not pronounced. Je réponds. Okay. Tu réponds. Well, the same form. Okay, exactly the same form, so the same pronunciation. Tu réponds. Il répond. So, final D is not pronounced. You only have this on nasal uh, sound at the end. Répond. Elle répond. Okay. So, je réponds, tu réponds, il répond, elle répond, okay? So, so far, only one way to pronounce it, all right? Then, of course, for nous, we've got the normal and classic ending O-N-S, okay? Don't pronounce the final S, you only pronounce this on sound. So, you get répondons, nous répondons, nous répondons. Okay, and then classic ending for vous as well, a z. Okay, remember you combine these two letters, you get the sound e. So répondez, vous répondez, vous répondez. Okay, and then the last persons here, ils répondent. So, same thing uh, here, classic ending, ENT, but then you don't pronounce it, okay? Répond, d, répond, il, répond, elle, répond. Okay, so let's see all the form one more time. Je réponds, tu réponds, il répond, elle répond, nous répondons, vous répondez. Ils répondent, elles répondent. All right? Hier, yesterday, aujourd'hui, today, demain, tomorrow. OK? Hier, yesterday, aujourd'hui, today, demain, tomorrow. So let's see now. Hier, so yesterday, Hier matin. Matin is morning. Okay, so yesterday morning will go in French like hier matin. Hier matin. Okay. Après-midi means afternoon. Hier après-midi. Yesterday afternoon. Hier après-midi. Hier après-midi. All right. And then soir, evening. Hier soir. Hier soir. Ok, so let's repeat that. Hier. Hier matin. Hier après-midi. Hier soir. Ok. 
So now, aujourd'hui, today, aujourd'hui. Ce matin, so we put here this ce, this matin, morning, this morning, ce matin. Cet après-midi, this afternoon, cet après-midi, cet après-midi. Ce soir. So, soir, evening, this evening. Ce soir. Ce soir. All right. And then, demain. So, tomorrow. Demain matin. Tomorrow morning. Demain matin. Demain après-midi. Tomorrow afternoon. Demain après-midi. Demain soir. Demain soir. Tomorrow evening. Demain soir. So one more time. Hier. Hier matin. Hier après-midi. Hier soir. Aujourd'hui. Ce matin. Cet après-midi. Ce soir. Demain. Demain matin. Demain après-midi, demain soir. 50, de 50 à 75, till 75, de 50 à 75. So let's see how they go. 50, 50, 51, 51. 52 52 53 53 54 54 55 55 56 56 57 57 58 58 59 59 60 60 61 61 62 62 63 63 64 64 65 65 66 66 67 67 68 68 69 69 And that's normally when my students, when I'm in, in class with them, start to look at me like they, they would like to kill me because now we're getting to the tricky point in French, okay? So have a look here. Now we've got this 70, of course. Uh, but then in French, it's a bit more tricky because you take back the 60, 60, and then you will add the 10, 10. Okay, so... For this 70 session here, you will have to use this 60 and then 10. And so all the numbers from 10 to 19, you will have to put them right here after. Okay, so let's see how it goes. 
soixante-dix, soixante-dix, soixante et onze, soixante et onze. Okay, so you can see here now. Soixante, sixty, and then onze, eleven. Soixante et onze. Soixante-douze. Soixante-douze. Same thing here. Sixty and then twelve. Okay? Soixante-treize. Soixante-treize. Soixante-quatorze. Soixante-quatorze. Soixante-quinze. Soixante-quinze. Okay, so we don't, we won't go uh, further, uh, not to be more traumatized because I've got some nice surprises after that as well. Okay, so remember that uh, well till seventy. Uh, well, it's quite it's quite not easy because it's always difficult to remember the numbers, but still it's uh, not that tricky. Okay, so remember that for seventy here. Uh, so from seventy. To 79, you will have to use this 60, so 60, and then the numbers from 10 to 19. Okay, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. So we'll see the, the rest uh, in a, a coming lesson. So now, what we'll do, we'll go to, to till 100, and then we'll see uh, all the, the what tricky and irregular forms. Okay, so. If you remember uh, when we stopped, it was here, okay, so 75. In French, we'll have to use this 60, so 60, okay, and then after that, you will have to put this 15, 15, okay, so remember from 70 to 79, it will work the same way, so you will have to put this 60 and then the numbers from 10 to 19 after. Uh, sorry, yeah, 19, yes. Okay, so in that case, it's 75, 75, okay, 60, and then 15, okay? Next one, 76, okay, so 60 and 16, okay, 76, all right? 77, 77. Soixante-dix-huit, soixante-dix-huit, soixante-dix-neuf, soixante-dix-neuf, and then quatre-vingt, okay, so for eighty it's quatre-vingt, quatre-vingt, all right, quatre-vingt-un. 81 82 82 83 83 84 84 85 85 86 86 87 87 88 88 Quatre-vingt-neuf, quatre-vingt-neuf. And now for ninety, well, basically it would be the same thing as we had for seventy. So you will take this quatre-vingt, eighty, and then you will add the numbers from ten to nineteen after. So quatre-vingt-dix. And then, 91, so 91, so remember, 80, and then 11, 
91, 92, 92, 93, 93, 94, 94, 95, 95, 96, 96, 97, 97, 98, 98, 99, 99, and the last one, 100. Remember, final T, not pronounced. 100. Okay? Discover this parce que form. So, parce que means because. Okay? And it's really, really useful. So, we'll see how to use it. Okay? So, parce que here. So, the first use uh, of uh, parce que is when you want to introduce the reason. Okay? So, we've got two examples here. Il ne mange pas tout de suite. Okay, so here you've got the negative form, remember, ne, and then pas. Manger means to eat. Il ne mange pas. So he doesn't eat. Tout de suite. Well, basically it means right now. Parce qu'il, okay, préfère attendre. So in that case, because he prefers to wait. Il préfère attendre. Okay? Préférer to prefer. And then here, you can see that attendre is to wait. Second verb, okay? And then you should put it like here at the infinitive form. So the basic form of, of the verb, okay? Il ne mange pas tout de suite parce qu'il préfère Attendre. Ok. Second example. Nous allons dehors. Aller is to go. Dehors, outside. Nous allons dehors. So we go outside. Parce que. So because. Nous voulons marcher. Vouloir, to want. Marcher, to walk. Nous voulons marcher. We want to walk. Ok. Nous allons dehors. Parce que nous voulons marcher. Ok? And then, the second option to use this parce que is when you want to introduce the cause. La cause. Ok? Example here. Il prend son parapluie. Parapluie, umbrella. Prendre is to take. Il prend son, his. So he is taking his umbrella. Il prend son parapluie. Parce qu'il pleut. Pleuvoir to rain. It rains. Il pleut. Il prend son parapluie parce qu'il pleut. Ok. And then, second example. Il appelle le garagiste parce que sa voiture ne démarre pas. Ok. Appeler is to call. Garagiste is this nice person that will fix your car if it's broken or if it doesn't start, like in this example. Ok. Parce que sa voiture, voiture is car, sa voiture, possessive, his car, and then ne pas, so you get the ne negative form here, and démarrer is to start. Il appelle le garagiste parce que sa voiture ne démarre pas. So because his car doesn't start. Ok. Il appelle le garagiste parce que sa voiture ne démarre pas. All right. So you can see the two main way uh, of uh, using this uh, parce que. So the first one, the reason. In that case, uh, well, it's something that refers to the person. Okay. Actually, in that case, it doesn't. He doesn't eat because he prefers uh, to wait. And then uh, we go outside because we want. Okay. And then the second uh, possibility when you 
uh, talking about la cause in that case, uh, something that doesn't really, uh, it's not the, 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 the results of uh, what someone is doing, but it's, it's raining in that case, and then the, the car doesn't uh, start, it doesn't really, it's not the result of uh, the action of someone, okay? So that's the two main use of parce que. We will work on le Moyen-Orient, the Middle East. Okay, let's start. Le Moyen-Orient. So it's interesting here because normally if you would have only this word here, you would pronounce it moyen, moyen. Okay, but then as you get this vowel after, okay, you get to make the liaison between the two. Le Moyen-Orient, Moyen-Orient. Okay, let's start now. Israël, Israël, la Palestine, la Palestine, le Liban, le Liban, la Jordanie, la Jordanie. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Le Moyen-Orient. Israël, la Palestine, le Liban, la Jordanie. Okay, and now we'll see the nationalities. Okay, so Israël, and then in, I will put the masculine form here and the feminine form here. Israélien, Israélien, so masculine form and then feminine form. Israélienne. Israélienne, okay, yen, yen, okay, and then palestinien, palestinien, feminine form, palestinienne, palestinienne, le Liban, libanais, né, né, libanais, libanaise, okay, et Ez, z, ez, Libanais, Libanaise. And then, Jordanie, Jordanien, Jordanienne. Okay, yen, yen, Jordanien, Jordanienne. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Israël, Israélien. Israélienne, la Palestine, palestinien, palestinienne, le Liban, libanais, libanaise, la Jordanie, jordanien, jordanienne, l'extrême-orient, so far east, l'extrême-orient, so let's discover that together. So far east in French, we'll say l'extrême orient, l'extrême orient. Le Japon, le Japon. La Chine, la Chine, la Chine. L'Inde. So remember, you get this nasal here form, I N N, l'Inde, l'Inde, le Pakistan, le Pakistan, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Okay, so let's see everything one more time here. L'extrême Orient. Le Japon, la Chine, l'Inde, le Pakistan, Hong Kong. Okay, and now for the nationalities. So each time I will put the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, le Japon, japonais, japonaise. Okay, so the only difference is there. Et Es, japonais, japonaise. La Chine, chinois, 
So it's really this wah 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 sound, remember? Chinois. Chinoise. Z, z, was. Chinoise. So chinois, chinoise. L'Inde. Indien. Yen. Indien. Indienne. So remember this E uh, double N. You open it. E. Indienne. Le Pakistan, Pakistanais, Pakistanaise. Hong Kong, Chinois de Hong Kong, Chinoise de Hong Kong. So let's see them one more time. Le Japon, Japonais, Japonaise. La Chine, Chinois, Chinoise. L'Inde, Indien, Indienne. Le Pakistan, Pakistanais, Pakistanaise. Hong Kong, Chinois de Hong Kong, Chinoise de Hong Kong. Le verbe pronominal. So, what is le verbe pronominal? So, first we'll take an example. Regarder, to look, to watch. Ok? And then, se regarder, in that case it would be to look at oneself, okay? So that's the important thing about this verb pronominal. The, the verb pronominal will be constructed all the time with this se before the verb. Se regarder, okay? And this se will basically change the meaning of the verb because regarder, to look, to watch, se regarder, to look at oneself, okay? So we'll take an example. So if we take the regarder verb, okay? So normally you will construct this sentence. Je regarde la télévision, okay? I watch the television. Je regarde la télévision, okay? But then if you use this se regarder, so as I said, to look at oneself, in that case, je me Regarde. Alright, so you will have to add this me thing here before the verb. Je me regarde. Okay, so let's see how we will conjugate these verb at the present form. Je me regarde. Tu te Regarde. Il se regarde. Elle se regarde. Nous nous regardons. Vous vous regardez. Il se regarde. Elle se regarde. So now you can see that you've got to add this ne, te, se, nous, vous, se before the verb when you conjugate it. Okay? Let's take another example. Appeler. To call, okay? And then the important thing in that case is that, as usual, you know, appeler is starting with a vowel. A, ah, here. And it does mean that, as usual in French, normally we should have this se, but then e will disappear, and it will look like that, s'appeler. So, appeler to call, and then s'appeler to call oneself. Okay? So let's see how we will conjugate this verb. Je m'appelle. So same thing here. The E uh, that we had previously disappeared. Je m'appelle. So remember that's normally the, the, the verb that you use when you introduce yourself. Like I call myself. So my name is. 
of course, but then in French it's like I call myself, okay, je m'appelle. Tu t'appelles. Tu t'appelles. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. Nous nous appelons. Okay, so I will, I will make the, the liaison. Nous nous appelons. Vous vous appelez. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. <coughs> Sorry. So if you look carefully here as well, so you will have to add this m, t, s, okay, and then nous, vous, s, okay. So remember, it's just because the verb is starting with a vowel. It would be the same if uh, the verb would start with uh, the letter h plus a vowel because we don't pronounce h, so and that's the reason why. Uh, my God, I'm losing my voice. Let's hope I will finish. <laughs> um, be careful, because in some cases, when you will uh, add this s in front of the verb, then le sens, so the meaning of the verb, will change. So, I will put a few examples here. Uh, trouver is to find, okay? And then, se trouver means to be, être. Okay, trouver to find, but then se trouver is to be être. Passer to pass, se passer, avoir lieu, so to take place. Se passer to take place. Passer to pass. Okay, and then mettre to put. Se mettre, well, it's to start, commencer, to start something. Okay, so remember. Trouver, to find, se trouver, être, so to be. Passer, to pass, se passer, avoir lieu, to take place. Mettre, to put, se mettre, commencer, to start something. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and we'll see together, more precisely, how to conjugate the verbs that will end with U -I -R -E, U-I-R-E, huir. Okay, so let's start now. Huir and the verbs I think uh, that uh, could represent uh, this category is uh, conduire. Conduire means to drive or conduct. Okay, and so let's see how you will conjugate this verb. Je conduis. Tu conduis. Il conduit. Elle conduit. So, so far it's not that difficult, okay, because I assume that most of you would have put this final S here, S and then T, okay, because it's in most of the cases the way we will conjugate the verbs of uh, the third group. Not all the verbs, not all the verbs, but most of them, okay, so that's the reason why you will get this uh, form, je conduis, okay, so it's quite simple, tu conduis. And then, il, elle, conduit. Okay, keep in mind that you pronounce them the same way. Okay, so let's see how it will go for nous. And it's actually not that difficult, but then, of course, most of you maybe would like to see air here. Okay, but then, no, it's not the case because it will become S. Nous conduisons. Okay, and the good news is that it will stay for vous. Vous conduisez. And then also for il, elle, il conduisent, elles conduisent. Okay, so one more time. Je conduis, tu conduis, il conduit, elle conduit, nous conduisons, vous conduisez, ils conduisent, elles conduisent. Okay, so basically these verbs are not really tricky. They are not really difficult. The only thing that you get to remember is that this is S here, conduisons, okay, because, well, I won't get into that, but if you would put this R here, it would be the future form, okay, but then here, keep in mind that you've got to put S here, conduisons, and then conduisez, and here, conduise. 
So we'll see now the other verbs that, that will actually be conjugated like conduire. Construire, cuire, déduire, détruire, instruire, introduire, nuire, produire, reproduire, réduire, séduire, traduire, and few others. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Construire, cuire, déduire, détruire, instruire, introduire, nuire, produire, reproduire, réduire, séduire, traduire. And of course, you are expecting the translation. I know that. And this is the reason why you will get them. So, construire means construct, build. Cuire, cook. Déduire, deduct, deduce. Détruire, destroy. Instruire, educate, instruct. Introduire, introduce, insert. Nuire, harm, damage. Produire, produce, make. Reproduire, reproduce, copy. Réduire, reduce, decrease. Séduire, charm. Traduire, translate. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs here will actually be conjugated like we saw a few minutes ago. Voilà. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see the verbs that are ending with ER, okay? And remember, they can be quite tricky. So that's the reason why we will take the time to have a look at them, okay? And so basically, in that case, so the verbs ending with ER, we'll see three categories. The first one, it will be what we call les verbes à un radical, okay? So we'll see that a bit later, but radical is the stem, the root, okay? So actually, these ones are quite easy to conjugate. The second group is les verbes à deux radicaux. So now it's getting uh, a bit difficult because it will mean that uh, these verbs will have will have actually two uh, stems or uh, roots, if you want. So we'll we'll see that. Don't don't worry. And then this third group. Oh, it's a strange one here. But then actually we're talking about les verbes à trois radicaux. So in that case, we will see that well they, they are the well the most tricky one. But then don't worry, we'll manage to 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 uh, understand uh, how it works. Okay, so let's see now and we'll start with the easy thing <laughs> and it's better and it's les verbes à un radical. So the verbs ending with er and in that case I thought it might be interesting to take the verb ouvrir. Ouvrir is to open. Okay, so it's quite useful. And so the idea is that this final Er will be taken away to get the stem, the root. And so after that you will get j'ouvre, tu ouvres, il ouvre, elle ouvre, nous ouvrons, vous ouvrez, ils ouvrent, elles ouvrent. Okay, so it's clear that we've got this verb ouvrir. Okay, so ouvrir is the ending with er. And as I told you here, you should take this er away. Okay, so we will get the form o u v r. And then after that, you will add so the endings e for je. So that's the reason why you get j'ouvre. For tu, you will add es. And that's the reason why you will get tu ouvres. For il, elle, you will add e, ouvre. Okay, so basically you get the same phonetical form here. Okay, it's the same pronunciation, but you should write it ouvre, e, ouvre, e, s, ouvre, e. Okay, and then for nous, well, the classic ending, o, n, s, ouvrons, nous ouvrons, 
and then for vous, classic ending EZ, vous ouvrez, il, elle, classic ending ENT, ils ouvrent, elles ouvrent. Okay, so it's actually not that difficult if you think about this little thing. So you should take this ER away and just add these endings. Okay, so we'll see now few verbs that will actually be conjugated the same way ouvrir is. And it's couvrir, découvrir, cueillir, accueillir, recueillir. Assaillir, souffrir, and a few others. Okay? But these are the main ones. Um, couvrir, découvrir, cueillir, accueillir, recueillir, assaillir, and then souffrir. I don't know what there, why there is a little dot here, but then don't bother with this. Um, and of course, as uh, in most of the cases, I try to give you the translation and here it goes. So couvrir means to cover or to wrap. Découvrir, to discover. Cueillir, gather, pick. Accueillir, welcome. Recueillir, collect, gather. Assaillir, Assault, attack, and then souffrir, to suffer. Okay, so these verbs here will be conjugated the same way ouvrir is. And it's not that difficult. Okay, so now let's see the second group. So what we call les verbes à deux radicaux. And so we'll take partir. Partir is to leave. We use this verb quite often, okay? So basically it's quite important to see how to conjugate that at the present form. And so, as I said, the idea is that we will have two different roots, two different stems, okay? And the first one will be PAR for the singular form. So we're talking about je, tu, il and elle. So the singular form, okay? And then for the plural form, we will have part, okay? And we're talking about nous, vous, il, elle. So let's see how it will go, okay? So the first form will be je pars, okay? Remember, you put this S, you don't pronounce it. Je pars. Then you will get tu pars, il, elle, pars. So the first thing that you get to keep in mind, you've got this final S, final S, final T, but then you don't pronounce them. So phonetically, je pars, tu pars, il part, elle part. The same form. And then, if you think about what we saw here, we should have this first part here, and then the endings after. And that's the reason why we will get nous partons. Okay, so you've got this P A R T and then we put the ending O N S the classic one. Vous partez same way and then obviously we'll have il part elle part okay so the first part P A R T and then the ending E N T okay and this is the tricky thing with this verb partir it's it's just to remember that when you get the singular or the plural, well, basically, you will have different stems, okay? So the first one, keep in mind that you, you will have this PAR, and then you will add the ending S for JE, S for TU, T for IL, ELLE. Phonetically, JE pars, TU pars, IL pars, ELLE pars, okay? And for the plural, as we saw, you just keep this P A R T and you add the endings O N S, E Z, E N T, and you will get nous partons, vous partez, ils partent, elles partent. All right. So let's see now the verbs that will be conjugated like partir, sortir, dormir. Servir, sentir, mentir, se repentir, and few others. Okay, so sortir, 
dormir, servir, sentir, mentir, se repentir. And of course, you would like to have the translation. Sortir means to go out, dormir, sleep, servir, serve or be used for, sentir, smell, feel, mentir, lie, se repentir, express remorse. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs will actually be conjugated like partir. Okay, and last but not least, uh, don't be afraid. So now we've got the, the, the last uh, group of verbs uh, ending with ER. And uh, these verbs will belong to the group of verb à trois radicaux. So obviously you understand now what I'm talking about and we'll see how it goes. And in that case, well, basically the idea with uh, venir, so I decided to take venir, venir is to come. Same thing, it's a quite used verb, so that's the reason why I think it's important to, important to see how it goes. And so the, the, well, the difficult thing with uh, this group of verbs is actually you will have one form for the singular. So we're talking here about je, tu, il, elle. Okay, so in that case, the stem, the root will be Vien, V-I-E-N. Okay? Then we will have another root or stem for nous and vous at the plural form. And it will be V-E-N. Okay? So you can see that it's not the same. And last but not least, we'll have a third stem or root for il, elle at the plural form. And it will be Vienne. And this is the tricky thing with uh, venir, and we'll see the, the other verbs uh, that will uh, be conjugated like it. It's, you've got three, three forms here. So, vient for the singular, ven like that for the plural, but then it's only nous and vous, and then vienne for the plural, il, elle. So, let's see how it goes. Je viens, tu viens. Il vient, elle vient. Okay, so we do agree that we respect the rule. So you take this V U N and then you put it right here. And after that, you will put the ending. Okay, then think about what we saw. Nous and vous, so they're coming right now. We should use this V U N stem. So that's what we are going to do. Nous. The non. Okay, so you put back this V E N and after that you will put your ending O N S. Nous venons. Then you will get vous venez. Okay, and the last one, remember here for il, elle at the plural form, you will use this vien here and then you will add the ending E N T. Ils viennent, elles viennent. Okay, and so this is, well, normally what is difficult, uh, trying to remember how to conjugate them and especially keeping that fact in mind that for the singular you will put this V-I-E-N and then you will add S for je, S for tu, and T for il, elle. Okay, and phonetically it's, the, sorry, <laughs> it's the same form. Uh, so you get je viens, okay, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. And then it was quite fast. <laughs> But then for nous and vous, okay, you will put this V-E-N, all right, and you will add the ending O-N-S for nous, E-Z for vous, okay, and you get nous venons, vous venez. And the last part, remember, well, basically for il, elle, you will put back this V, I, E, double N, and you will put the ending E, N, T, and you'll get ils viennent, elles viennent. And it can be quite tricky because if you think about that, especially phonetically, it's, uh, it's challenging in a way because you get this nasal sound here, je viens, okay, viens, 
tu viens, well the same, il vient, elle vient. Then you will get this the nom. Okay, keep in mind that it's really a in that case. The nom, the ne. And the last one, because you've got this double N here, you need to pronounce this E uh, like E, eh, E. Eh. And that's the reason why you should pronounce it Vienne, Vienne. Okay, so il vienne, elle vienne. So just one more time to make it clear. Je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. And so let's see now the verbs that will actually be conjugated like venir. And we're talking about tenir, contenir, détenir, maintenir, obtenir, devenir, revenir. Intervenir, se souvenir, and few others. Okay, so, tenir, contenir, détenir, maintenir, obtenir, devenir, revenir, intervenir, se souvenir. So, let's see now the translations. Tenir, hold, keep. Contenir, Contain. Détenir, possess, have. Maintenir, keep, maintain. Obtenir, obtain, get. Devenir, become. Revenir, come back. Intervenir, intervene. Se souvenir, remember. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, how to conjugate les verbes, the verbs that are ending with ur, okay, so ur, and well, actually, even if it's, let's call it a micro group, uh, I think it's quite important to just take the time to see how to conjugate uh, these verbs, okay, and so the example I wanted to uh, use or to take is Conclure, and basically it means to end, close, or conclude. Okay, so let's see how we will conjugate conclure. Je conclue. Tu conclues. Il conclut. Elle conclut. Nous concluons. Vous concluez. Il conclut. Elle conclut. So, as usual, let's say that the singular is not that difficult because probably you would put that uh, without knowing uh, that it goes like that. S, S, T. Okay, so you get conclu, conclu, conclu. Okay, the same phonetical form here. The tricky thing, in a way, is for nous, vous, il, elle of the plural, because basically you don't put anything between this U and uh, the ending. So you get this concluons, okay? So don't put any S or anything here. So it's not conclusion or concluron or something like that. For the present form, it's concluons, okay? Concluez, and then here, Conclu. Okay, keep in mind that even if you put this final ENT, so the ending, you don't pronounce it. So phonetically you get conclu. Conclu. Okay? So je conclue, tu conclues, il conclut, elle conclut, nous concluons, vous concluez, il conclut, elle conclut. And so when I say it's a micro group, it's just because <laughs> you will see that we've got actually two verbs that will be conjugated like conclure. But, you know, honestly, it's, it's quite important to introduce them anyway because they are not that tricky uh, to conjugate. And it's inclure and exclure. Okay, so inclure. Exclure, and I'm pretty sure that you understand how 
or what they mean without the translations but of course I will offer you the translation and it's uh, inclure means to include or incorporate and then exclude, exclude or get rid of okay les verbes du troisième groupe and uh, more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate at the present form the verbs ending with VRE. Okay? VRE. So let's see that together. And so the example I wanted to take is quite useful because it's VIVRE. And VIVRE means to live. And so the tricky thing that you've got to keep in mind with this group of verbs is that it will have actually two stems or two roots so we'll see uh, practically what it, it does mean okay but then keep in mind that for the singular form so je tu and then il elle actually the stem or the root will be v i okay so basically you take away this vre ending Okay, and then for the plural form, so it will be nous, vous, and then il, elle, the stem or the root will be v, i, v. Okay, so, and that's the difficult thing, uh, because for the singular, the stem will be v, -I. for the plural, it will be v, i, v. Okay, so let's see now how it will go when we conjugate this verb. So you will get Je vis, tu vis, il vit, elle vit. Okay, so we do agree that you take this root or this stem here, you put it right here, and after that you will put the ending. For je, it will be s, for tu, it will be s, the same, and for il, elle, it will be t. And so if we keep the logic as we saw now for the plural form, we will take V, I, V, and then after that we will add the ending, and the classic ending for nous is O, N, S. Nous vivons. Vous vivez. Ils vivent. Elles vivent. Okay, so if you have this thing quite clearly in mind that we've got two stems so the first one for the singular is v plus the endings and then for the plural it will be v -I -V plus the ending then you will master this verb and the other verbs that will actually be conjugated like it okay so let's see now the endings remember for je it's s for tu s and for il so this is the reason why we get je vis, tu vis, il vit, elle vit. Okay? And then for nous, the ending is ONS. So you get nous vivons. Then EZ, vous vivez. And after that, ENT, ils vivent, elles vivent. Alright? So let's see now what verbs are actually conjugated like vivre and we've got suivre poursuivre revivre survivre and a few others but then these are the main ones so suivre poursuivre revivre survivre okay so let's see what they mean Suivre, it's to follow. Poursuivre, pursue, chase. Revivre, relieve, live through again. Survivre, survive. Okay, and these verbs will actually be conjugated like vivre that we saw a few minutes ago. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and we'll see more precisely in this video how to conjugate the verbs that are ending with this IRE thing. So, IR, okay, and uh, we'll see that basically they are quite tricky to conjugate. Okay, so let's start the right now. And I thought that it would be more logical 
to put them sorry in two groups and the first one is actually and logically ERE and the second one we are talking about the verbs that will end with OIRE, WAR, and then AIRE, ER. All right. Um, my advice for this video is actually to uh, probably make a list on your own and try to learn them by heart because it will be the only way to uh, actually remember them. Okay. But then let's start with the first group, IRE. So the first verb that we'll see is lire and lire means to read okay so je lis tu lis il lit elle lit nous lisons vous lisez ils lisent elles lisent all right so je lis tu lis il lit okay so same form here phonetical form but then it's S at the end, S and then T. Then you will get nous lisons, vous lisez, ils lisent. Okay, so this one honestly is not that tricky. So that's the reason why I wanted to start with this one. Let's see now the second one. And it's dire. And dire means to say. Je dis, tu dis, il dit. Elle dit. Nous disons. Vous dites. And now you can see the tricky thing here. So it's not vous disiez, okay, as many would think, but then it's vous dites. Okay, final S not pronounced. Vous dites. Ils disent. Elles disent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je dis. Tu dis. Il dit, elle dit. So basically here it's not that difficult because I, I'm pretty sure that most of you would actually, without knowing that, try to conjugate it and put, put these forms. Okay, so je dis, tu dis, il dit, elle dit. Then nous disons. So, so far it's actually quite logical. But this is the tricky thing here. Vous dites. Okay, so remember that, well, in most of the cases uh, at the beginning, you will say, vous disiez, okay, and it's quite interesting because French kids normally when they start to learn the language, they don't use this vous dites, but then they make this logical mistake, vous disiez, okay, but it's actually vous dites, and then il, elle, disent. Third verb is Écrire, écrire is to write. And then, j'écris, tu écris, il écrit, elle écrit. Same thing here, it's really easy, okay? It's getting normally tricky at the plural form. Nous écrivons, and this is the strange thing here, you get to put this V here. Écrivons, okay? But then you keep the logic, in a way, vous écrivez, okay, so V is coming here as well, and it will be here for the plural form as well, okay, ils écrivent, elles écrivent, all right, so, j'écris, tu écris, il écrit, elle écrit, nous écrivons, vous écrivez, ils écrivent, elles écrivent. So keep in mind that for écrire, actually, the tricky thing will be to put this V for the plural form. Rire. And it's to laugh. Je ris. Tu ris. Il rit. Elle rit. Nous rions. And this is a tricky thing, nothing between I and O. Rion, vous riez, il rit, elle rit. And keep in mind that here at the end, okay, you've got this E and T, but if you remember, because I've been talking about that quite many times, you don't pronounce this final E and T. And so phonetically, you get the sound ri, okay, exactly like you have here. Ri, ri. Ri, ri, okay? So, and then here, rion, 
riez. Ok, so you get je ris, tu ris, il rit, elle rit, nous rions, vous riez, il rit, elle rit. So now comes the second subgroup. Okay, we're talking about the verbs ending with war or air. And so for the first verb, I decided to take plaire, and plaire is to please. Je plais, tu plais, il plaît, elle plaît. Have a look here. Accent circonflexe for il and elle, but not for tu and not for je. Okay. Nous plaisons, vous plaisez, il plaise, elle plaise. And that's normally the tricky thing because in many situations, persons or students will put air here because they are logic and <laughs> in a way French language can be quite strange. So basically you will have to put S here, but then the good news is that it's coming also for vous and then for il, elle. Okay, so this is the tricky thing here. But then je plais, tu plais, il plaît, elle plaît. Well, this circumflex also. Nous plaisons, vous plaisez, il plaise, elle plaise. Faire is quite useful and we use this verb quite often in French because it means to do. Okay, so let's see how we will conjugate it. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. Okay, so this one is a tricky one. Well, basically, if you think about je, tu, il and elle, well, this is not really tricky and this is quite easy to make because phonetically it's fait, fait, fait. And then for the endings, it's quite logical, s, s, t, like we have normally for the third group, okay? Now, nous, is actually quite strange because even if, of course, you put this S here and in a way it's a surprise, but then the most difficult thing that you should uh, keep in mind is uh, the way you will pronounce it because you don't pronounce it E as normally you should, but you will pronounce it like E. Uh, nous faisons. Okay, it's really F, F, F. Nous faisons. Okay, you see it with E, but then you pronounce it F, nous faisons. So this is the first difficulty, and the second one is here, because if you look, it's a bit like we had for dire previously. Actually, you don't have this faisé, huh? if you would be logical, uh, it would go like that, but then it's fait. Okay, so keep in mind, these two things are actually quite tricky. The first one here for pronunciation, nous faisons, and the second one here, because you write it like that, and it's not vous faisiez, but vous faites, okay? And then ils font, elles font. So just for one more time, je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait. Nous faisons, vous faites. Ils font, elles font. Okay? This one is important because we use it quite often in French. We've got many expressions that are uh, combined or constructed with faire. Okay? So keep in mind that uh, it goes like that. Faisons and then faites. Mm -hmm. Croire. Croire is to believe and it's quite useful as well. So, je crois. Tu crois, il croit, elle croit, and now you've got this Y here, and the sound goes like nous croyons, okay, croyons. Vous croyez, and last but not least, look, il croit, elle croit. And phonetically here, as we saw, ENT is not pronounced, so you get the sound croit. 
exactly the same sound as we've got here. Croix, croix, and then croix. Okay, so one more time. Je crois, tu crois, il croit, elle croit, nous croyons, vous croyez, il croit, elle croit. Okay, so keep in mind that here, when you've got this Y and two vowels, one before, one after, it will be like Y, Y, Y. So you combine it with O first, you will get croyons, croyons. And here, croyez, croyez. Okay? Boire, and boire is to drink, so it's quite useful. You do that every day, or then at least you should. Je bois, tu bois, il boit, elle boit. And this is the tricky one. Nous buvons, vous buvez, ils boivent, elles boivent. Okay, so same thing here. If you look carefully, you've got, well, diff three different stems. So, bois here. So, it will be actually quite easy at the singular. So, je bois, tu bois, il boit. Okay. Then for nous and vous, you've got this stem. So, B-U-V. Then you put the ending. Buvons. Then, buvez. And for il, elle, we've got a third stem or root. And it's B-O-I-V. And you put the ending, ENT. Okay, so you get Je bois, tu bois, il boit, elle boit, nous buvons, vous buvez, ils boivent, elles boivent. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate uh, the verbs that are ending with DRE and UNDRE at the present form because they can be quite tricky. Okay, so let's start. Um, so the first group, I thought it might be interesting to take a quite common verb, attendre, and attendre means to wait, okay, so attendre, and for the second group, so the indre group, we'll see the verb craindre. Craindre is to fear, okay, so attendre and then craindre. Okay, but um, then let's start with attendre. So, basically, you've got your ending dre. Okay, so the verb is attendre. And the thing that you get to keep in mind is that in that case, you will take er e away. Okay, so you will get j'attends. And then for tu, it will be tu attends. For il, elle, il attend. For nous, nous attendons, vous attendez, ils attendent, elles attendent. Okay, so if you look carefully, basically you can see that the infinitive form is attendre. Okay, and as I told you, then you take this R E away. Okay, so you will get this form A T T E N D. And after that, you will basically add the endings. So for je, it will be S, okay, and that's the reason why you've got this attend like that, so D, and then you just add this S. For two, it will be also S, okay, same form. Then for il, elle, don't put anything, okay, so that's the reason why you've got the, the basic form. Then for nous, the classic ending, O, N, S, okay. For vous, you will have E, Z, okay, so that's the reason why you get this attendez form and for il elle you will get a n t okay so that's the way uh, that well these verbs ending with dre will be conjugated okay so you get j'attends tu attends il attend elle attend nous attendons vous attendez ils attendent elles attendent all right and well if you Think about the verb attendre in that case. Let's see the verbs that will be conjugated like uh, attendre. Okay, so répondre, for instance, confondre, descendre, défendre, entendre, perdre, 
prétendre, rendre, répandre, tendre, vendre, and other verbs as well. <laughs> okay, but the, I cannot uh, make the, the full list. Okay, so these verbs will be conjugated like attendre. Okay, but then I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, you are expecting uh, some translations here. Okay, so that's the reason why they are coming now. So, répondre, it's to answer. Okay, confondre, to get mixed up. Descendre, to go down. Défendre, defend. Entendre, to hear. Perdre, to lose. Prétendre, to claim. Rendre. To give back, répandre, to spread, tendre, to stretch, and then vendre, to sell. Okay, so these verbs will actually be conjugated uh, just like attendre uh, was conjugated a few minutes ago. Okay, so répondre, confondre, descendre, défendre, entendre, perdre, prétendre, rendre, répandre, tendre, and then vendre. Okay, but as you know, like almost all the time in French, we've got some exceptions. Okay, and uh, of course, the verb prendre, and it's quite used because it means to take, is an exception. Okay, so even if it's ending with dre, well, basically, it won't behave like attendre um, that we, we saw previously. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So, dre, prendre, you've got to. Remember that the forms will go like that. Je prends, tu prends, il, elle prend, nous prenons, and here you can see the difference. Vous prenez, and the last one is quite tricky because it's il, elle prennent. Okay, so basically you double the N here and it will give you a, a well, different uh, sound here because you get to open the sound so it's prêt. Okay, so let's see that one more time. Je prends, tu prends, il prend, elle prend. So if we look carefully, actually we've got, I mean, these forms are pronounced the same, okay? Then we've got nous prenons, okay? Keep in mind that you should pronounce it pre, prenons. Vous prenez, and then the last one, the tricky one, ils prennent, okay? Ils prennent, all right? So basically, remember that prenons, Prenez and then prenne will be different as, uh, well, the forms that we had for uh, attendre, for instance. Okay? And, uh, well, when we speak about prendre, actually, we've got the verbs apprendre, comprendre, entreprendre, reprendre, surprendre, and few others. And these verbs will actually be conjugated as prendre. All right? So, let's see what they mean. Apprendre means to learn, comprendre, understand, entreprendre, begin doing something, reprendre, to take again or to take back, and then surprendre, surprise. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs will actually be conjugated like prendre. All right, and so now let's see the second main category that we had, and it's indre, and the verb, the example that we will take is Craindre, and craindre means to fear. Je crains, tu crains, il craint, elle craint, nous craignons, vous craignez, ils craignent, elles craignent. Okay, so you can see that for nous, Vous and then il, elle at the plural form. It is quite tricky because you've got this g n coming right here and then the sound is craignons. Okay, you get the ny ny sound. Okay, craignons, craignez, craigne. Okay, but then if you remember to put it here, so the good news they say is that it, it will come for nous, it will come for vous, and then it will come for il, elle at the plural form. So, je crains, tu crains, il craint, elle craint, nous craignons, vous craignez, ils craignent, elles craignent. Alright, so keep in mind that 
ending will be s s and then d okay but then phonetically as you know you pronounce them the same crin 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 okay then ons craignon craignier a z and then craigne a n d And of course, we'll see few verbs that will be conjugated like craindre, and they are atteindre, contraindre, éteindre, joindre, peindre, plaindre, teindre, and few others. Okay, so atteindre, contraindre, éteindre, joindre, Peindre, plaindre, teindre. And so let's see what they mean. Atteindre, it's to reach. Contraindre, force, constrain. Éteindre, turn off. Joindre, join, combine. Peindre, paint. Plaindre, pity, complain. And then teindre, I. Okay, and so keep in mind that these verbs will be actually conjugated the same way as uh, craindre is conjugated. All right. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate at the present form the verbs that will end with t r e tr. Okay, so we can start right now. And I thought it might be more logical or easier to divide them in two groups. Okay, the first one would be uh, verbs ending with TR, so it's not a big surprise. But the second one, and I thought that maybe we should put them in a special group. So the verbs ending with être and oître. Okay, so A, I, accent circonflexe, TR, E, être. Oître, O, I, accent circonflex, T, R, E. Okay, so, because basically they will behave uh, a bit differently. So, let's start now with the first one. So, the verbs ending with T, R, E. And for this group, I thought it might be interesting to use a quite useful verb. Mettre, mettre is to put. Okay, and so the concept is that you will have... For the singular form, one stem or one root, okay, and it will be M, E, T. And for the plural, you will have actually another stem, another root, and it will be M, E, double T, T, T. And this is the tricky thing if we're talking about these, uh, these verbs, okay, so let's see how it will go. So, je mets. So you can see that now, as we saw, you put back this M-E-T, so the root, M-E-T, and then you add here the ending, S. Tu mets, il met, elle met. Okay? So then now, if we think about that, we should, for the plural form, put back this M, E, T, T, and after that we will put the ending. And this is the reason why we'll get nous mettons. So you can see that we put back M, E, T, T, and then the ending O, N, S. Nous mettons. Then vous mettez, so in the same way, we keep this first part, so the root or the stem, plus the ending. And then finally, Il met, elle met, exactly the same thing. And this is basically uh, the difficult thing when we're talking about this group of verbs, okay? Just to remember that for the singular form, you will have to use this stem here, and then for the plural, you will have to use another stem. Then the endings will be S for je, so you will get je mets, S for tu, tu mets, Nothing for il, elle, so that's the reason why we have this m, e, t. Keep in mind that phonetically you pronounce them the same here. Me, me, me. Okay? Then for nous, you will put the ending 
O-N-S, but then keep in mind that the stem is different, M-E-T-T, -T. for VU, a Z, same thing, same stem here, and then E-N-T for IL and L. Okay, so now let's see a few verbs that will be conjugated like mettre, and we're talking about admettre, commettre, compromettre, permettre, soumettre, transmettre, battre, abattre, combattre, débattre, and few others. Admettre, and it means admit, confess. Commettre, commit. Compromettre, compromise. Sorry, <laughs> this is my French pronunciation here. <laughs> compromise would be more appropriate than permettre, allow, permit. Soumettre, submit, subdue. Transmettre, pass, transmit. Battre, beat, defeat, abattre, knock down, combattre, combat, fight, and then débattre, discuss, debate. Okay, okay, so keep in mind that these verbs here will be actually actually conjugated the same way as a mettre. So as we saw, we've got a second group here in this video, and it's actually concerning the verbs uh, ending with être and what and for this group I thought it might be interesting to have this verb connaître connaître is to know okay and we use that quite quite often okay and basically we will have the same kind of situation meaning for the singular form we'll have one stem one root and it will be connaît like that and for the plural form, we will have a different stem or root, so connaisse. Okay, so connais and then connaisse. And that's the reason why we'll get the following forms. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît. And keep in mind that it's a strange, strange thing. I know, but you should put here this accent circumflex. You don't pronounce it, I know that. But then if you want to write correctly, you should put it here, okay? It doesn't come for je, it doesn't come for tu, but then it will come here for il and elle. It's strange, I know, but still that's the way it should be done. For the plural form, keep in mind that we've got our stem here, our root connaisse, okay, so we should put it back here and then add the ending ONS. Nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. Alright, so one more time, you just put for the singular this stem here and then for je you will add S, for two you will add S. For il, you will add t. And that's the reason why you will get je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît. And then keep in mind this little circumflex thing here. But then for the plural form, we've got a different stem, connais, and then the endings will be the same, ons as usual, ez and ent. So you will get the forms nous connaissons. Vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right? So, it's actually a bit difficult probably at the beginning, but once you, you have the idea that actually you've got two different stems for the singular and for the plural, then it's actually quite easy. Uh, regarding the circumflex thing, well, it's up to you if you want to write it or not, but you should put it, of course. Let's see now together the verbs that will actually be conjugated like connaître and they are accroître, croître, paraître, apparaître, disparaître, naître, renaître, reconnaître, comparaître and few others.
So regarding the translation now, accroître needs to increase. Croître, grow. Paraître, appear, seem. Apparaître, come into being. Disparaître, disappear. Naître, be born. Renaître, rise, be reborn. Reconnaître, recognize. Comparaître, appear before. Okay, and these verbs will actually be conjugated like connaître. Le futur proche, so basically if you want to translate it directly, it would be the near future. So what is le futur proche exactly? It's the possibility that we have in French and in other languages to construct basically a future with aller at the present form followed by the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, so like in English you would say, I am going to travel, for instance. In French we would say, je vais voyager. Okay, so remember, first aller, that you conjugate at the present form, and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form. Okay, so first, of course, we did introduce the verb aller and the way to conjugate it, but still, I think that it is really important to see how it goes. So, we will see one more time the conjugation of aller at the present form. Okay, first person here, je vais. Remember, final S not pronounced. Je vais. Okay, tu vas. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il Elle va. Nous allons. Final S not pronounced. And then when you get this O-N combination, you get this nasal on, really in your nose, okay? On. And then let's make this little liaison here to make it sound more beautiful. Nous allons. Nous allons. Okay? Same thing here. Vous allez. Vous allez. All right. Remember, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay? But then when you combine these two letters, you get the sound E, okay? Allez, and then vous allez. All right. And the last persons, ils, elles vont. Ils vont, elles vont. Okay, remember, final T, not pronounced, so you get this O, N, nasal here. On, vont. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so that's the first part that we'll, we will use to construct this uh, future proche, okay? And then the second part will be, well, the verb that you want to express, but at the infinitive form. So I've been writing few examples here. So the first sentence, je vais voyager, voyager means to travel, avec, with, ma famille, my family. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Family. Okay? So, quite simple way to construct a future form. Tu vas chercher, chercher means to search, une nouvelle maison. Okay? Une nouvelle, nouvelle, it's the feminine form of the adjective nouveau, new, okay? Because maison, house, as you can see here, is feminine, so une nouvelle maison, a new house. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Okay? And then, il, elle, va partir, partir is to leave. Okay? Pour, pour means for, pour un an. One year, un an, 
okay so i will make the, the liaison just to to make it more more uh, normal after okay but i just want to divide here un, un, okay so let's read it normally now il va partir pour un an okay so you can hear that now i make this link between the two un an un an so no break between the two un an okay il va partir pour un an elle va partir pour un an okay then for nous nous allons chanter chanter means to sing okay cette chanson so remember cette feminine form of ce this okay chanson song and as chanson is feminine so you should put this this form here at the feminine this okay nous allons chanter cette chanson nous allons chanter cette chanson mm -hmm. and then for vous vous allez adorer so adorer to adore to love a lot <laughs> ce film okay ce so you see now this okay but then it's the masculine form because film film here is masculine ce film this movie okay vous allez adorer ce film vous allez adorer ce film and the last one ils vont boire boire is to drink un café a coffee ils vont boire un café elles vont boire un café okay so let's repeat everything again je vais voyager avec ma famille tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison il va partir pour un an elle va partir pour un an nous allons chanter cette chanson vous allez adorer ce film ils vont boire un café elles vont boire un café Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon B. And in this, in, in this lesson, sorry, we'll uh, try to work on the le genre des mots, so the gender of the words, because normally that's uh, something a bit difficult uh, for um, students to know or to remember the gender of the words. So normally what I tell them is to try to memorize, try to remember the gender when they discover or when they see a new word, but I know it's not, uh, it's not easy. Okay, so in this lesson we'll try to see actually a few endings that give you some useful tips and uh, well, well, we'll focus only on the, on the feminine, feminine words uh, and we'll start right now. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, when you see words that are ending with this e o n so you can be almost <laughs> this is quite important never say always uh, when you talk about Fran french language language because you always find some uh, exceptions okay so uh, i won't say always i will say in most of the cases okay when they end with e o n okay um they in most of the cases they will be feminine Okay, so for instance here, la libération, or then la nation. Okay. Other ending is t, so when a word is finishing or ending with t, like that, la rapidité, rapidité means uh, speed, and then la santé, health, okay, in this case, you can be almost sure that these words will be feminine okay when they're ending with u r e ur okay la peinture paint la voiture car okay so they are feminine and then when they're ending with s like that e s s e so for instance la politesse la vitesse vitesse means uh, speed okay so these words are feminine and these endings are classical ending for feminine form okay so let's see them one more time la libération la nation la rapidité la santé la peinture 
la voiture, la politesse, la vitesse. Ok So let's see a few more. So, still for the feminine form. So, when you will have a word ending with this E, double T, E, et, et, ok, for instance, la chaussette, la roulette, so they will be feminine, ok, chaussette means sock, and then roulette, well, it's the same, the thing you will find in casinos, and then when they're ending with E, E, like here, Okay, so basically you don't pronounce the, the E, okay, so it will be only the sound E, okay, for instance, la vie, life, okay, la partie, the part, okay, so they will be feminine as well, okay, and then words ending with E, accent aigu, and then E here, okay, remember, this final E is not pronounced, so you will have this E, remember, accent aigu, it's E, sound, okay, la poupée, the doll, l'arrivée, the arrival, okay, la poupée, l'arrivée, so feminine as well. Uh, in that case, remember that normally it should be la arrivée, but as arrivée, as usual, you know, start with the, a vowel, then a is disappearing, and then you just put this apostrophe, okay, and then words ending with ud, like that, u, d, e, Ud, okay, are normally, in most of the cases, feminine. La gratitude, well, if I, my understanding is correct, is exactly the same in English. La gratitude, and then same thing here, latitude. Latitude, okay, so let's repeat them one more time. La chaussette, la roulette, la vie, la partie. La poupée, l'arrivée, la gratitude, l'attitude. Okay, I know it's not the key. It's not the magic key that will help you forever and uh, that will uh, give you all the time the, 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 the correct gender of the words, but still you've got some, you've got some tips now, okay? It was leçon B, okay? Remember that I've been doing uh, many lessons so they can be found there on youtube.com slash imagier okay and then the website is here imagier.net you can find more material there have a nice day bye bye l'article partitif so what's l'article partitif well basically it's when you want to say that you want some sugar for instance so you don't want to specify the quantity Okay, just want to say that you want some, but you don't want to say one, two, three. Okay, then as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, so for the masculine form, it will be du. Okay, du. Simple thing, d, u. This is u, this is d, du. All right. And then for the feminine form, it will be de la, okay, de la, all right, masculine form, du, feminine form, de la, all right, let's see a few examples now. Je bois, boire, boire is to drink, okay, so je bois du café, all right, so you can see the difference here. It would be possible to say, je bois un café. Okay? In that case, you would translate it, je bois un café by, I drink one coffee or I drink a coffee. Okay? In that case, when you put this du café, so first you put the masculine form, because café is masculine. Okay? And then you want to say, you don't want to specify the quantity, you want to say, I drink some coffee okay je bois du café okay uh, the other option as well would be to say je bois le café so if you want to put this article défini but then you would have to put more information after le café de ma mère the coffee of my mother if you want okay so in that case in this lesson we'll only focus on l'article partitif so it's 
some, ok? Je bois du café. All right? Let's see another option. Tu voudrais... So, I wanted to introduce this voudrais form, ok? So, it's coming from vouloir. Vouloir is to want, ok? But then it's not the present form here, the classic present form. It's the conditionnel form, ok? So, it's the polite form that normally we should use. So, I would like to have, you know, you don't say tu veux, you don't say you want because it is, uh, it is too, too, too strong and too direct. So, normally we tend to use this conditionnel form. Uh, so, tu voudrais, you would like to have, and then salade, okay, and it's feminine, so you should put the feminine form of this partitif, so de la salade, so some salad, okay, tu voudrais de la salade, all right, let's see another example here, nous mangeons, so manger is to eat, okay, and that's the, the form for nous, okay, nous mangeons du gâteau, gâteau is cake, okay, and it's masculine, so du gâteau. We eat some cake. Vous voulez, okay, so vouloir again, all right, to want, okay, but here it's the present form, okay, do you want, vous voulez du fromage, cheese, du fromage, so some cheese, and it's a question, vous voulez du fromage, okay, and the last example here, so I've been putting this il y a, we'll see that a bit later in this unit, but it will come. Il y a means there is, okay? Il y a, there is, okay? Il y a de la neige, neige is snow, okay? Par terre, on the ground, par terre. So, there is snow on the ground. Il y a de la neige par terre. Okay, so let's repeat all these sentences. The first one, je bois du café. Second one, tu voudrais de la salade. Nous mangeons du gâteau. Vous voulez du fromage? It's a question, so I've been insisting a little bit too much maybe. Let's do it one more time. Vous voulez du fromage? And the last one, il y a de la neige par terre. Pourquoi? Why? Pourquoi? Why? Okay. So, if you ask a question with pourquoi, why, normally the answer that you will have will start with whether parce que, because, okay, or then pour, plus one verb at the infinitive form, so the basic form, okay. So, whether parce que, and then you just start a sentence, or then pour plus a verb at the infinitive form. Okay, let's see now some examples. First question, pourquoi es-tu ici? Pourquoi es-tu ici? Okay, ici means here. Es-tu, are you? Why are you here? Pourquoi es-tu Ici. So the first answer. Parce que. So because. Je suis invité. I am invited. Par. By Nicolas. Because I am invited by Nicolas. Parce que. Je suis invité. Par Nicolas. Okay, so normally when, when you start with the parce que, so you want to express the reason why, okay? Parce que je suis invité par Nicolas. Alright? And then, other option would be pour passer la soirée. So in that case, passer uh, should be translated like uh, spend, okay? Pour, to spend, pour passer la soirée, the evening, avec, with, vous, you. Pour passer la soirée avec vous, to spend the evening with you. 
And in that case, when you will start your answer with pour, okay, so you will express what will you, you, you will do uh, after that, okay, pour passer la soirée avec vous, okay, and in that case, parce que you want to introduce the reason why, okay, so that's the way we will construct answers when you will ask a question with pourquoi, okay, où est le cube? Where is the cube? Où est le cube? Okay, so let's see that together. Uh, so here, first situation. Here, okay. So this is le cube and this is le cylindre. Okay, so just to make it clear because that's the things we'll use uh, to introduce, well, the prepositions. Le cube est sur le cylindre. So you can see it's on. Okay, so sur le cylindre. Okay, and there is contact here. Okay, it's quite important. Second option, same thing, but it's basically under here. Le cube est sous le cylindre. Okay, le cube est sous le cylindre. Don't pronounce the final S. And then this OU combination of vowels is pronounced OU. Okay? Sous. Sous. Le cube est sous le cylindre. Alright? Then, here, no contact. And that's really important. Okay? Le cube est au-dessus du cylindre. So let's repeat it. Le cube est au-dessus, final S not pronounced here, au-dessus du cylindre. Okay? Then, same, situa same, same situation, sorry, but then the opposite, so it's here and no contact here, you can see no contact. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre. Okay? Au-dessous, final S not pronounced, du cylindre. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre. All right? So, here, I've been putting the plural form because we've got two here. Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. So, next to, okay? Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Okay, gauche, left, on the left, of le cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Okay, then the next one. Droite, obviously it's right, on the right. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Ok? In front of. Le cube est devant le cylindre. Le cube est devant le cylindre. And now, behind, it's not possible to see it, that's the reason why. Le cube est derrière, so behind, le cylindre. Le cube est derrière le cylindre. So I've been taking away the color just to, to show you that it's inside, okay? So in, le cube est dans, so in, le cylindre. Le cube est dans le cylindre. Cylindre. Les adverbes de lieu. So really useful. And we're starting right now. So the first one that we'll see. So I've been putting each time the English first and then the French version here. Okay, so here. <laughs> so I, was re I won't read the, 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 the English one. I will focus on the, on the French one if that's okay with you. Ici. Ici. Okay, then, là. So remember, you've got this accent, but 
Well, you don't pronounce it, okay? So it's la, la. Oops. Laba, laba. Remember, final s not pronounced. Laba. Loin. Loin. So remember when you get this combination O E N, it's Oin, 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 okay? Loin. Alright? So let's see them one more time. Ici, là, là-bas, loin. Okay? Devant, final T not pronounced. Devant. Devant. Derrière. So if you look carefully, you've got E here and then double R. So it will open the sound of this E and you should pronounce it E. Okay? De. Derrière. Same thing here. You get this E accent grave. E. Derrière. Okay? Don't pronounce the final E. Derrière. Okay? Final S not pronounced. Dessus. 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 Dessous. Dessous. Final S not pronounced here. Dessous. Okay, so let's repeat them. Devant. Derrière. Dessus. Dessous. Okay. Dedans. Final S not pronounced. Dedans. Dedans. Dehors. Okay, so remember, final S not pronounced, and then this H in French doesn't exist phonetically, so you don't pronounce it. Dehors. 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 En haut. En haut. Okay, final T not pronounced, and then this H, as previously, you don't pronounce it, so this is O. En haut. En haut. En haut. En bas, final S not pronounced, en bas, en bas, ok? Quelque part, don't pronounce the final T, quelque part, quelque part, autre part, autre part, autre part. Ailleurs, look, final S not pronounced, and then you've got this y, y, y sound, ailleurs, okay, so I, sorry, I insist a little bit too much maybe, but still, let's read it normally now, ailleurs, ailleurs, okay, autour, 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 okay, so repeat them one more time, quelque part, Autre part, ailleurs, autour. Comment exprimer, sorry, comment exprimer l'obligation. So, when you must do something, well, there is a verb for that, to express, to express must, and this is falloir. Falloir, ok, falloir. And then you will have two options, the first one will be Il faut, so you get to remember that falloir is what we call verb impersonnel, okay, because there is only one form and it's il, third person of the singular, il faut, okay, so uh, je, tu, nous, vous, etc., they don't exist for falloir, it's only il, okay, il faut, and then the verb coming after will be at the infinitive okay so that's the way to express to must okay and then or to have to if you want il faut okay same form but then you will add after that a nom a noun okay so whether a verb at the infinitive form or then a noun so we'll see 
few examples now. So the first scénario, as we would say in French, is falloir plus infinitif. Okay. So here, il faut respecter les règles. All right. Il faut respecter, so to respect, les règles, the rules. Il faut respecter les règles. All right. And then another option. So I've been putting here and here the two parts of the negative form. Il ne faut pas fumer. Fumer is to smoke. Ici, here. Il ne faut pas. Pas fumer ici. Okay, so now we'll see the way it works with noun, a noun. And here, for instance, il faut. So still il faut, remember, as I said, uh, it's only il faut. So it's a verb impersonnel. Okay. Une carte d'identité. Il faut une carte d'identité. Second example here, il faut un parapluie, umbrella, un parapluie, car, because, il pleut, it's raining, it rains, il faut un parapluie, car il pleut.